Hello everyone, and welcome back to the most recent, and what is most likely going to be the final episode of Star Trek Adventures, Cerberus Station. Uh, there will be some notes on what might happen or what to expect after this finale, so please stick around if you're interested in hearing a brief idea of what might happen next. But, um, aside from that, let's jump straight into it with the Captain's Log. Captain's Log. Stardate 83439.1. The Interling currently living on board the Borg Transwarp Hub have found a way to get the other non-working parts of it back online. This would open up modes of transportation to almost 30 different areas of space that have yet to be explored, and many ships are on standby, ah, on standby to do just such a thing. Much of the support fleet has offered up their services, along with the Ferengi's Limitless Latinum although I hesitate with the latter. And looking over possible candidates to lead this new mission, I had quite a few interesting candidates come across my desk, but I've narrowed it down to Commander Bashir, Commander Surratt, and Commander Turney Jail, Bernie Jail's elder brother. Although some can still sneak through at the last minute, I still have several data pads to go through. The Arion, under command of Commander Keevan, has traveled into the Carceri Nebula itself, hoping to find a bigger connection with the planetoid Janus 3, and has yet to return from its mission. Reports say that they should be <clears throat> returning shortly, and I hope that's the case, as I would hate for something to go wrong while they're in the Nebula. End log. Okay. So, uh, the opening, the external shot of the station has seven ships in total. Uh, the first time that the support fleet has all been together around the station in first time in several months. Also included is the Limitless Latinum, uh, commanded by uh, Damon Gong, who is itching to be the first through any one of the number of portals that are opening up. Um, <clears throat> as of right now, it's a fairly casual atmosphere on the station. Uh, one cannot simply expect to flick a switch and all the gates will turn on at once. This is more of a slow burn. Uh, over the last several hours, you have seen the power readings uh, extend from the core of the Transwarp Hub all the way up to the uh, burnt out section, where it's about roughly 50%. So another hour or two, and you would expect that the Transwarp gates will start coming online. At which point, it's off to the races. Six Starfleet vessels, one Ferengi vessel, and the rest of the galaxy to explore. Our first scene is just going to be a one on operations. Um, the the USS Arion has not returned from their uh, bah, from their excursion into the Carceri Nebula yet. Uh, anyone interested in seeing what they have found? Please check out the prologue. So the t uh, command. Ah, Captain Crawford and Commander Dalrym, you guys are puttering about on or overseeing the operations of the station. Uh, uh, Lakila, I believe, was on the uh, Arion, so he's not there. So we have Lieutenant Deckard, who is keeping an eye on the Transwarp Hub's power readings and trying his best not to visibly drool on the ca uh, drool in anticipation. The trans or the uh, turbolift doors open and Verity walks out. She looks mighty keen with herself. As she beams to everyone on, or she beams a very sincere smile, despite the lack or despite the excess amount of Borg exoplating around her face. I can I must say, Captain. It is a from one leader to another, it is an extensively difficult task trying to coordinate everyone. This has been one heck of an excursion. Yes, but it seems like getting everyone together has proven to have some pretty interesting results, Verity. You've done some good work. Thank you. I'm. Don't mind me, I'm just killing some time. Just waiting to see what happens over, out there. Uh, Mr... Deckard and her, you notice a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
not aversion, a uh, hesitation when she decides to speak directly to Deckard. What is what is the status of the Transwarp Hub? It's, 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 it's going pretty well. It looks stable for the most part there. The energy output's are nominal and um, some fascinating, fantastically crafted exoplane upon your arm there. Yes. Yes, I have seen you looking at it, as well as other parts of my body. If I ever get this removed, I will be sure to send you one portion of an exoplating as a peace offering. I do hope when uh, your time expires among the living, that you would donate your cybernetics to me. Uh, you don't need to be a telepath to see the um, look of uncertainty and disgust on her face at the suggestion, but she quickly stammers. <clears throat> well, that's hopefully a long ways out. But if such a thing happens, I will be sure to donate it to the Starfleet for analysis, with a note that you should have some priority, or uh, some, uh, a, a place of favor among the, mm, di the uh, diagnostic team. Wonderful, thank you. And with that, she, Im she quickly nods back to the captain and Dalrum, and decides that it is best that she not be here anymore. Sir, what are you plan thinking is going to be on the other side of these gates? Oh god, you were talking to me. I'm sorry. I yeah. spaced out for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, That was in character. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it is now. <laughs> um more different regions of space for us to explore, new species to meet. Maybe technology that might be centuries beyond ours. It's going to be interesting. It'll be definitely interesting to see what all is there. I personally am hoping that one of the gates leads to a spot in Federation space. Get us a pathway back to home a little easier. Oh, that would be nice. Maybe somewhere right near Ryza. I'd like to take a vacation sometime. Ryza would definitely be nice. I'm can... sure Apatu wants to get back. <laughs> yes, by now, Ryza has mostly been rebuilt from its uh, devastation from the Borg attack about 40 years ago. Their climate is once again uh, a point of tourist attraction but so the next question is where does Verity go after she is done with the her quick time on the bridge and the answer to that is Demos's quarters um, Lieutenant Commander Demos you are in security when your um, neural feed buzzes uh, Verity's Verity is requesting to see you in your quarters, as apparently you have something for her. And Demos is just going to put down his paperwork and get up, and he's going to head on out. Dura stands at attention as you leave, and goes back to manning her, going back through filing reports. It has been roughly, I believe, three weeks or so after the whole Akashi debacle, and only now is the reports finally ready for transmit back to Starfleet uh, Central. Uh, as soon as I get... Demos it. just gives her a little wave. It's like, you're in charge. Don't shoot anyone unless it's someone that needs to be shot. That was one time. Okay, twice, sir. Oh, right. I forgot about it. You know what? I take back what I said. Continue the good work. <laughs> Awkward moment. He's just going to walk away. <laughs> Uh, at this point, I assume it's more of a playful discussion between the two of you. <laughs> ah, you head out to the uh, You head out and find her approach. Uh, find her just waiting outside your quarters, trying your best not to 
look too conspicuous, which is very difficult. Uh, her face uh, breaks into a very familiar, uh, pleasant grin as you approach. And uh, Verity. she comes up and gives her a big hug. Well, what's this for? Am I being probed? Hello. It's just been a while, Demos. I'm just wondering how you've been. Oh. Um, fully functional and operational. No leaks, no rust. The odd twitch every now and then, but I think that's just because I think I get cold. Yeah. Well, I, I read your letter, your uh, correspondence about your time with the with your species, uh, with the Exo. That was. I'm surprised you stayed. Well, there's still more missing. So. And this has now become an active hub across the rest of the galaxy. Makes sense. I still wish you would give me the uh, schematics for their engine. I've heard our sensors indicated they. Well, you know as well as I do. Even if I say it, it would cause several thousand interlink individuals to lose productivity, and we can't have that right now. <laughs> well, the Hephaestus core is a secret for now. The leadership believes that most of the species in this galaxy are still too young to wield such power. Fair enough. Hey, who am I to decide? I'm only leading approximately 20 million interlink drones, well, former drones, free-thinking civilians. She taps the side of her head comically. All through the power of advanced telepathic telekinesis nanoprobe magic things. Well, I hope you don't get headaches. Well, come on in. He's just going to walk up to his door, punch in the panel, mm -hmm. and uh, walk on in. All right. You walk in, and the first thing you see is Decon. Uh, she's sitting in the chair. Uh, she stands <laughs> up and... Ah! Captain, sir! I have come up with plan number 238 of how to eliminate all organic life. Interesting. Uh, Decon, Verity, Verity, Decon. We've met. I'm fam I am familiar with her from your, uh, from the report of Resnick on board your exoship. She saved him, although she didn't treat him with much respect. Uh, Decon looks, is this not a good time? For exterminating all organic life? No. No, let's give that another 20,000 years. How about that? <sighs> she visibly sighs. Very well. And then she strides out. I don't mind her. She actually reminds me of my older sister. You have a weird yeah. family. I got an old family. Anyways, I'm afraid I don't have much time, Demosa. What is it that you'd like to show me? Right. Well, this is something not just for you, but for every one of the Interlink. And um, Kivan and I and a few others have been working on this. And he's going to go over to one of the wall panels and uh, open up the cupboard and pull out two uh, armbands. He's going to hand her one. He's like, this is for you. She... It is locked to a specific image. The clothing can be changed, but the facial, facial functions can't. Uh, just to prevent, you know, misbehaving right around with someone else's face. She... It's... Mm -hmm. It's meant to help with, well, what some might see as a burden, a curse, or a stigma. I know not everyone's going to care about how they look, but just for those that do, if they just want to feel like their old selves a bit. It goes on the forearm. You see her, uh, you see the little laser pointer in her mobile scanner uh, run it up and down as she processes it. This is a holographic overlay band. Mm. Mm. She's... Uh, she puts it on, and it activates. Now, the fun thing is, it's not going to work on non-cybernetically enhanced or exos, because it will have a delay to their physical movements. But since, well, you and I both don't have normal brains, it's going to read our intentions as we make them. So it will have real-time fluid movement. She... Uh... She doesn't seem to be paying much attention to what you're saying at the moment, as her, heh, her 
two organic looking eyes uh, ah, look over her entire body. Uh, say, thank you. And she's beginning to tear up and she runs into your bathroom, which I don't know if you've ever used, but uh, she opens it up and starts looking at herself in the mirror. And then she breaks down sobbing. Is something wrong? Does it not look right? I it, tried basing it off of what we had on records. It, it, it's, it's it's perfect. The, she can't stop running her uh, holographic hand over, wiping the holographic tears from her face. It's I I don't. Last time I saw this face was, I was prepared for death, and uh, it's she. This is a, a, a bit much right now, and uh, she hugs you and actually attempts to kiss you on the mouth, or wherever your mouth would be, and quickly, and in between sobs, she has to deactivate it and reverts back to herself. This, <clears throat> this is what I am right now. That was who I was, and want to be again, Demos, thanks, but right now I have to focus on the task at hand. Once that's done, well, you'll see her again. Sorry, so I, this wasn't what you, the reaction you expected. I, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Verity, it doesn't matter how you look like to me. I just wanted to give you and your people a relief from what has happened as i said it's meant to just escape either completely or temporarily i'm i'm a giant toaster that can crush someone's chest with my good meal on them i'm fine with what i am and i just wanted to give you just a break you know no. uh the the plan is to make more of these for the rest of the interlink and help with recoping and reintegrating if they wish it's it's just something that could be you know given thank you um this is a lot to take in right now but i have more pressing things to do once the gates are open i can focus more on whatever this next step is sure thing yeah and with that she heads out and Back to parts wherever Verity wishes to go next. Midas, you hiding? Were you recording this? Yes, sir. Don't. Why? You little creeper. I... <laughs> I am sorry. I was attempt... I was thinking that this might be one of those golden memories that you would have liked to have preserved for in your external storage. I was in I error. Was... I have a subspace brain that's on a quantum storage level. I don't need to record anything. Oh. You, you're, just, you're just selling it again, aren't you, you little weirdo? Yeah. Yes, I am definitely a little weirdo. I apologize. Hey, you sold the recording of me crushing the captain with these in the little arena. I, I know you sold it because a few Ferengi were telling me that you ripped them off. It wasn't a full holographic recording. They were upset. Uh, I was simply attempting to negotiate with Ferengi based on their own rules. Uh, I'm going to keep you away from that Gorn. He's teaching you the wrong things. Yes. Very well. Memory deleted. That is a shame. That kiss would have gotten at least two bars of gold-pressed latinum locally. And by my current estimations of market value, at least ten if sold through the extranet. Why do you have an index value of all the... No, you know what? I don't want to know. Uh, We're just going to go up on a day like this didn't happen. Understood. This conversation between me and you didn't happen, but you're not recording anything again. So noted. Recording functions archived. Yeah, let's go back to work now. Yes, sir. Er, yes, yes, Demos. 
Okay, so it's going to be a couple hours <laughs> before anything else happens. Does anyone have anything they wish to do in the meantime? Uh, keeping in mind that I believe Keevan is on the... Um, or Keevan and Dr. Adams are on the Arion. Abbott. Uh, or Abbott, sorry. I was close. I had your name right. Well, no, I didn't. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> Would they be returning in this time that we're waiting for it to... Not quite. Uh, the, their time will come rough, uh, roughly two hours. Can you rephrase that? <laughs> no. Phrasing their has... time will come. <laughs> no. Phrasing has always been a thing on this show, and I'll be damned if I stop now. <laughs> this brought to you by appropriate phrasing. Yes. Okay. And Walter. Um, yeah. What do I want to do here? Um... Uh, since we introduced them a few sessions ago, uh, I think Crawford will want to go talk to his aunt yeah. if you have her token sitting around somewhere. Oh, probably somewhere. Okay, that's probably down in the theater. Yeah. Uh, that would be the shop and the theater. Q-R-S theater. There we are. Okay, so it has been a little bit of time since we've been here. Uh, because Due to the remoteness of the location, you haven't been able to book a professional acting troupe for more than two days. But their recent time was, or their, they just recently finished their uh, Broadway, or their um, first, or bleh, their interspecies version of Hamlet. Interesting. Including the uh, Klingon giving, giving the to be or not to be in its original <laughs> Klingon. Uh, here, here's my question in terms of theater affairs. Uh, how's that, uh, how's that concert with, uh, Admiral Riker coming along? Uh, that would be between you and the Admiral. The no Admiral has... Send communications. Yeah. I believe that was Catherine, correct? Yep. Yep. Uh, you see her, she's doing a bit of busy work behind the scenes, moving set pieces around. Despite the advancements to holographic technology, she still insists that physical set pieces are far more preferable and give a far better um, approach to theater than just whatever light comes out of those danged emitters. Uh, Crawford will sort of hop up onto the stage and help her move certain set pieces around. Do you... You don't have to come down and help me do this, sweetie. Do, don't you have, like, people for this? Yeah, but sometimes I gotta do a little bit of manual labor instead of just sitting in my office going through paperwork all day. When, that's, why I came, that's why I came out here. Do you have any idea the amount of work it takes to run a theater in Federation space? Um... I have some idea, but please enlighten me. Well, for starters, I don't have to. For starters, uh, Starfleet stations, they're res uh, because of Starfleet personnel, I save a ton of money on labor. Uh, it cuts the paperwork down significantly. I don't have to worry about being shaken down by whichever um, delinquent organization decides to set up shop in my area of operations. And quite frankly, having a Starfleet uh, station does or will add a bit of credence uh, to those who decide to come out this far. <laughs> now you didn't come. I'm sure you didn't come down. Uh, I'm sure you didn't come all the way down here just to hear me talk about why I'm totally abusing you f and using nepotism for my own gains. At this point, you know who kind of sit down at the uh, edge of the front of the stage. He's like, Dad probably would have loved this place, huh? <laughs> well, his hologram certainly does, but it's not the same. But yes. And she puts a comforting hand on your shoulder. He would have been proud of a lot of things. Uh, hope he did, even though I feel like I've screwed a lot of things up here during my captainhood. Did I ever tell you the incident on Bolia? 
I don't think you did. Oh, sweetie. I was young, led an acting troupe, and for fun, damned cocky, I must say, (laughs) tried to do the Blue Lagoon completely in Bolian without universal translators. Wow, did it go terribly. Not too surprised by that. Nope. Um, apparently, if you... Apparently, Zinthal could be pronounced with the wrong um, accent. is actually an insult to their matron deity, which, you know, didn't go so well. If you've ever had bullion rock through, you know, bullion rock fruit thrown at you. That stuff is not digestible by anyone other than them. And it hurts. Trust me. But here's the thing, kiddo. Mistakes happen. The What determines if you become a great person or not is whether or not you're smart enough to learn from them. And I think time will only tell to see if I've actually done that. <laughs> uh, yep. Time is the only teacher you have to listen to. Well, side me, of course. But. <laughs> eh, she smiles and shakes her head. Uh, you were young. You fell down so many times down that mountain slope down in the holographic center on Quarks. Don't uh, remind me. Hmm. Okay. Uh, he... I, I won't, but, you know. That doctor there, he patched... He had to fix that broken leg of yours twice before you had to learn. I'm glad to see it's taken a few... I'm glad to see that you're not breaking bones this time. Yeah. Oh, that... I'm trying to remember here. Dr. Bashir, he was... interesting. Yeah, he came and went... He was on the station for a while, then he ducked out for whatever else. And came back, no one seemed to say a word. Smart man. Handsome, too. Tried to get him to be my husband for a while, but nope, he had eyes on a spotted woman. One of them trills. <laughs> Wonder if they ever oh, did anything about it. Who knows? Maybe you should get in touch with them. <laughs> oh, sweetie, I have no idea how to get a hold of anyone that important <laughs> I mean you got a nephew as a captain I could pull some strings well tell me what tell you what ca- tell you what Niles <laughs> you help me move that rigging or you help me set up this light rigging and I won't tell anyone about the time you uh, embarrass yourself in front of Linda Malloy and as long as if you can get me uh, that cute doctor's information, no one's ever going to have to find out about that one. Are you blackmailing me? Well, having family in high places certainly has its appeal, wouldn't you say? But, you know, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> I will offer you front seats to whichever show you like. Free of charge. That's even better deal than I gave those Ferengi. Oh, I guess it's time to help set up some lighting rigging. Um, let me get some appropriate gloves on first. Don't want to burn my hands on the barrels of the lights. Smart boy. Learn from your mistakes. (laughs) All right. Now, um, anything from Daldrum or Sulkin? I do have some quick little thing to tie up. Sure. Um, Uh, On uh, the command deck on the station. On ops. Op, yes. Okay. All right. I'm in charge. Yes, you're in charge as the captain has gone walkabout. Uh, Commander Daldrum, you are busy watching the power levels rising. It's roughly 80% now. And you're starting to see, um, even from this distance, uh, long flickering lines of green light. Uh, starting to become bright enough so that they can be visible even from non-magnified sensors. Turbolift door opens, and doc- or Lieutenant Commander or Dr. Sulkin walks in. Don't want to look, around, look down at the level. Doctor, what brings you to the op center? I have come to see 
Lut uh, excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> Lieutenant Duval. Darval spins around in his chair. <laughs> yes, Lieutenant Commander. Salutations, Lieutenant. I have seen that solution I have not I've given you has not been appropriate. I would like you to try this solvent. It's made from a Horta extract. It might be able to move your posterior out of this chair. I must... I am un... Is this an attempt at a joke? I am unfamiliar with any Vulcan who has gone through the Colonar to attempt actual humor. Dolrim's trying to stinker. I was told there was a serious metal condition that you never leave. I find my time spent most, effic most efficiently up here, ensuring uh, constant traffic through the gates and monitoring fleet disposition. Most logical. I will let you to it. Commander Dorham, it seems your suggestion is not needed. I appreciate the attempt. Thank you, Doctor. Would you like to stay up here? We're about to uh, jumpstart the new section of the gates. I am currently not needed. I would be honored to observe. Take your position. All right. One of these pa or one of these auxiliary panels can be quickly tied into monitor sick bay as needed. Um, the captain comes back. Uh, you know what? Oh, I forgot to make one very important announcement at the start of this. Um, due to me, uh, blatant, or I'm starting with zero threat. Uh, so oh. for two reasons. One, so that you can feel comfortable spending or giving me bits of threat every now and then. And two, for certain aspects, I'm going to be blatantly cheating. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. I'm frightened. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should have made that announcement at the start. I was caught up with things. But, anyways, um, so Captain Crawford, just to see if you can get me some get some momentum going, can you please roll me a uh, fitness plus command test, just to see how well you uh, uh, what? fitness plus, uh, command. What plus command? Fitness plus command. Yeah, That's why? One. Why not to uh, assist your uh, aunt in moving theater stuff? And okay, it's going to okay. be a difficulty of zero. Okay. Um. How much momentum? I think, I think the closest focus I have is probably team dynamics. <laughs> you know what? I'll let ah. that fly. Hell yeah! <laughs> Alrighty. For the team player. Okay. Ooh. Oh Jesus. Okay, oh, so that's God. one momentum. <clears throat> Captain Cro uh, Captain Crawford, you want come back to the bridge. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Sulkin, it does not take a medical tricorder to you, for you to realize that the captain has um, torn some torn a ligament in his hand by the way that he is currently holding it. Captain, if I may, oh. pull out a little uh, a hypo spray and inject it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Ah. Those uh, light have, rigs are heavier than you uh, remember them to be, Captain. Yep. Have you ever tried to assemble theater lighting before, Lieutenant Commander Sulkin? I cannot say I have. It's not a fun experience sometimes. Fascinating. I can gladly tell you more about it later. Uh, Lieutenant Deckard, how are things coming with the Transwarp Pub? Approaching 90%. Excellent. Well, this will be interesting to see if what's on the other side of these things, or if something decides to come through. At this point, uh, sensing the power levels are nearly ready, Verity re-enters operations. And she... Verity, welcome back. I'm glad to be here, and most of you can't help but notice that she is uh, taking a stance at one of the auxiliary consoles as far away from Mr. Deckard as possible. And it is rough on focus. screen. It is so at this point the USS Arion. 
makes its return from outside the from deep inside the nebula. Uh, Commander Keevan, Lieutenant... you are oh, sorry, er, er, Lieutenant Keevan in command, I believe. No, Commander Keevan, er, sir. Yes, I'm please. Sorry. My apologies, Commander Keevan in charge. <laughs> Arian to Captain Crawford. This is the captain. Go ahead, Commander. Well, we've we're arriving back from our study of the nebula, and we've come up with some interesting information. Um, I prefer not to have the Arian systems connected up to Cerberus Station at this time, but so we may want to actually just beam aboard the command staff for the time being and um, have an immediate conference. Of, of course. Um, I'll assemble the senior staff and we'll be right over. Okay. Aye, aye, sir. <clears throat> so, uh, here's how things work. Uh, Lieutenant, or no, nope, not Lieutenant, Commander Keevan, uh, you and your, and those who are on the bridge of the Arion during the encounter beam right directly into the conference lounge uh, just as Captain Craw or Captain Crawford, Commander Dalrum and Sulkin walk or head in um, the uh, power indicator of the transwarp hub uh, hovers at 99% for slightly too long ticks over to 100 and Lieutenant Deckard lets out a squeal of excitement as the gates begin to activate. Uh, there is a problem, however. Uh, the, typically, the gates glow a faint, or a, a vortex of greens, blues, and blacks. These ones are red. Oh. Um, Balls. <laughs> the giant head that is Janus 3. Uh, uh, external to the station opens its mouth and um, for the most of you nothing seems to be out of the ordinary except Darval immediately clamps his, heads, his hands to the side of his head in pain and if Mr. Sulkin could please roll me a control plus medicine test with a difficulty of two And if you have like a strong mind, meditation, that's uh, the colonar like drops difficulty by oh. two of any mental attacks. Okay, this would be a mental attack. So this is difficulty zero for you. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> so we're just basically seeing how you how much momentum you get. Crit, 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 crit. <laughs> not fail, not fail. Oh, that's right. right. I get brain damage in the first <laughs> <five minutes>. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, no! <laughs> I'm a volleyball. No, you're a Vulcan. You're a Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, two solids, nice. Two successes. So, uh, you get two more momentum. Um, so... Uh, I sense something. Oh, you do more than sense it. Uh, you, <laughs> you know more... Uh, you know that uh, sound of uh, tinnitus after you leave a loud rock concert where it's just <laughs> ringing in your ears? You hear that. Well, it's like that, just in your mind. Hmm. Um, and immediately your comm badge um, is hailed by four different individuals at once, all saying that their partners or co-workers have collapsed. Uh, two be uh, several betas, ah, another Vulcan, uh, two beta Zeds, and uh, uh, ah, I forgot the species name, but one of these others okay. that are sort of Empathic, not full telepathic, but... Delton? Delton, thank you. Um, at the same time, uh, Lut or Commander Dolrum, you get a call from a Patu. It's like, I'm sorry, I, I know I shouldn't be talking to you right now on this frequency, but... The, 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 the kids, um, and you hear your children's... Or you hear your uh, twins screaming in pain in the background there, Dolrum. I immediately look... Oh over to the captain like look of panic go to him go just go 
I too must go to sickbay. Okay, so we will cover the sickbay stuff shortly, but let's figure out what the hell might be going on in the conference lounge. Uh, so we will have, let's be over here at the square table. Okay, so come on, Sulkin, Doldrum, those guys aren't here. Gee, these guys are all, all aren't here. So we have you guys. Uh, we will have Lakila. Um, sorry, I'm just playing find the token when you have so many bloody support characters. Okay. That's, we have Tartiala. We have Lakila. Oh. I'm in the wrong layer. There we go. <laughs> you'd think I'd have. You'd think by being a GM for about a year in the system, you would understand layers by now, but I don't. This uh, is roll twenty you're talking about. Though. This this is roll twenty. Yes. Okay. And we have Mr. Mud. Okay, uh, so Captain Crawford, you come into the... I think you're forgetting about something, Ah, uh, Zach, how can I forget <laughs> about my favorite... In... How can I forget about my... The <laughs> world's best Tellarite. Yes. yes the, the, no, no, the most cautious Tellarite. Zach. Ah, uh, yes. There we go. I believe that's everyone. Uh, so, Captain Crawford, everything is just literally starting to fall apart around you, and these people show up. All right, Kevin, what did you find? You might have to make it somewhat quick considering what's going on. I'll make it brief. We found a pylon of some of alien spec about 5,000 years old, had a communications burst um, transmitted between us, between the Aryan and this pylon, and we communicated with an AI um, representation of a... Um, previous species known as the Salak. Basic... I'll actually type type in on the key keypad and bring up the hologram of the thing, not connecting to the ship, yep. just bringing up what I can bring up of the hologram that we spoke to and in the center. Something like this. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Oh. oh. Man, uh, player Spencer is super weirded out and not okay with this, but you know, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that supposed to be like a space mind flayer thing? Yes. Or like, yes, oh it is. god, that's terrifying. <laughs> I like it in a weird way. Yeah, I do that... too, but it's still scary. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that thing is. called himself the Warden. You be opening up a prison is what you're doing. From what we were able to uh, figure out, the pylons that are the uh, power source and the thing that holds the nebula together. Uh, the power source that powers all the pylons seems to be the center of the transwarp hub. And we're about to fully power that sucker on right now, which means it might cause some potential feedback loop into the rest of the pylons, and we don't know what it might do. The Vorg also weakened the field uh, when they created the stable corridor to enter the nebula. They destroyed several nodes in the process. So if the Transwarp Hub were to be fully reactivated, you're saying there's a possibility of the Carcerian Nebula going into a supernova? Not necessarily that, but definitely something is holding the nebula together. Basically, for every negative reaction that's about to occur, a positive reaction interferes with it and keeps it together. It's basically the laws of inertia acting upon itself. And it's an attempt to keep the nebula stable, to keep whatever that is trying to stay, the, the, the species we're trying to imprison, that they stay imprisoned. And if we open it, they get out, and it'll be our fault. Did this entity give you any ideas to what exactly it was that they were holding back in the nebula? All we had from that was a, another dimensional species called the Crawl. That's all. That, that's the only information that I have at the moment. They didn't give us any kind of spectral information about them. 
Captain Crawford, please report to operations. Darval's voice, attempting to stay level and calm, betrays a slight amount of stress in his voice. Abbott's I'll gonna catch on to that immediately. I'll be there post haste, Lieutenant. Uh, Commander, a very quick question, and he's basically like walking out of the room as he's asking this. Do you think we should postpone turning on the transwarp hub? I would probably postpone it as immediately. And he'll, as he's going up to, I guess it will be what back to ops because yep. I think they tran- t- transported him aboard the Arion, right? Uh no, Arion transported to the conference round oh, lounge. They're literally right next door to operations. Okay, he'll just. Uh, I'm not sure. If, we didn't give Verity a com badge, did we? No, you didn't. Or but we... she's already on in operations. Oh, well, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Ver- <laughs> I the. Apparently, I do not have very good object permanence tonight. Um, <laughs> he'll come out of the conference room. Verity? Uh, her eyes are kind of panicking at the moment. Um, as you can see, a that Darval has pulled up a magnified image of the Transwarp Hub, the part that has just powered on. Uh, Captain, I'm not sure what I'm... I'm not sure what we're seeing here. And you're seeing mm-hmm. oh, basically no. what looks like roiling thunder clouds belching forth out of several of the gates that have just been powered on. Verity, if you can, contact the interlink. Get them to shut down that process now. Uh, I don't think we can, Captain. That The amount of energy running through this is insane. If we shut everything down, we could risk destroying our home. Damn it. Yeah. Keevan, any proposals? The only thing I can think of is potentially shielding the openings to the transwarp op- um, gateways with some kind of inverse iris. That's the only thing that I can think of at the moment, would be basically to cover it until we can do something else with it. Out of character, yes, I am using Stargate as a <laughs> reference. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. I mean, there, there's probably some sort of shielding on the transwarp hub. Yeah. If not, there should be. Um, excellent, excellent proposal. Uh, put it into action immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Station, yeah. go to yellow alert. <laughs> yellow alert. I, uh, Darval, visibly or with his eyes clenched shut his fingers still dancing on the control pad, as if by memory at this moment, clearly fighting whatever the heck is going on inside his head. <clears throat> Sir, the, lim- the Limitless Latinum has taken off and is heading straight towards the shape, sir. Open handling frequencies of the Limitless Latinum. Open, sir. Limitless Latinum, this is Captain Crawford of Cerberus Station. Return back to your original position. You're not going anywhere near that thing. Captain, after all the services that the Ferengi Alliance has done to your station, you would wi- you would risk, or you w- will not grant us the honor of being the first to explore and profit from <clears throat> the whatever lies on the other side? Um, do you not see the giant space thunderclouds? It can't be any worse than that. The the riskier the road, the greater the profit. I don't care about your Ferengi rules of acquisition right now. Get back here. Uh, roll me presence command. And this is going to be opposed. Okay. Uh, let's see. So she is the defender. So you need to get... You need two successes in order to convince her otherwise. Okie dokie. Um, I will take a momentum for a third die. Okay. Noted. And diplomacy is a focus here? Sure. Huzzah. Oh! Whoa. That's us. Whoa. That's us. So we get six. so we're capped out on momentum and we have one floating. Yeah. You get your ass back here now. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
You got a one, a two, and a three. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, GM cheating shall intensify. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the lit- she cuts communications, and Darval reports, or Darval reports two things: one, that she is returning back to the station, and two, if he may pull- please uh, head to sick bay. Abbott's gonna come over and run a scan immediately, hearing that because everybody know on the station by now knows Darval doesn't leave their, that station. Yes, uh, you see that his mind is extremely um in a state of uh, uh, severe mental stress and anguish at the moment. It's like he has a 120 decibel engine just pumping stuff into his brain at the moment. You. I'm going to grab the, emerg- the tr- uh, emergency med kit that's on the bridge and immediately uh, give him something that will uh, <laughs> take away some of the pain. All right. Uh, you receive that and he sags slightly and slurs out thank you doctor uh, before getting up and slowly moving towards the turbo lift oh Abbott's gonna like go under the one arm and like medical carry him and she's just gonna look to the captain captain the it seems like he is on uh, under some sort of mental attack Got it. Um, get him taken care of. Okay. On our way to sick bay. And speaking of the infirmary, let's go there now. Okay, it's been a while since we've been in here. Okay, it hasn't been a while. Uh, Lieutenant Salkin, almost all of your diagnostic beds are f- are filled with um, telepathic or empathic species. Uh, Dolrum, you're... Uh, Including my head nurse, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> including your head nurse, I believe it is Bodag and um, Valen. Uh, both yeah. of Commander uh, Commander Dolrum's adopted children. Let's bring them out here. Your head nurse, uh, Special Zach, is not here because his beard is fine, despite what you <laughs> may say. Um, if Dolrum is leaving Khan, I can take Khan okay. up on the bridge. Sure thing. Uh, you now have a snappy Tellerite at Con. That should be a lovely dynamic change. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, so that's that. Um, All right, um, obviously I have some idea of what is going on because yes. I am I'm being affected also. Mm-hmm. But um, I want to go to the, the children first. Where's Dol- and, There's uh, Dolrum. Uh, okay. So, we're going to do some scans on the kids. Okay, scans on the kids. Uh, this is going to be Insight plus Medicine. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two. Okay. We now, thanks to our outspoken captain have plenty of <laughs> momentum yeah i'm going to go ahead and take some just a little bit <laughs> yeah just a little bit mm-hmm. i'll be here all week make... ladies and gentlemen <laughs> uh, don't forget to tip your waitress okay that is can you re-roll unless, uh, unless he has cautious medicine I do not have it. Okay. All right, so that's a solid no. So I'm going to just take those two threat for the complication, but you do succeed in the test. Uh, So it's pretty much similar to what I had explained to um, uh, Scotty's doctor. It's not Abbott. Abbott. By the time I remember it, the season will be over. Uh, Dr. Abbott brings in Darval, who is... Looks more like he has been back to his days as a as a young partying Vulcan, uh, being brought in, hung over. But you can see that he's bleeding from his nose. Anyways, <clears throat> where is Abbott character? Can I pull up? Now, is this similar at all mentally? to what I experienced with those hostile mental aliens? Not quite. Uh, there is a, 
Um, as you pull up, so as you look through their uh, scans, uh, considering that Doctor or Lieutenant uh, Jargovim, um, it is actually if there had to be a counter frequency for for mental attacks, this is it. Uh, so, you know, if if sound is coming one way, you neutralize it by projecting the inverted uh, waves back at it. Um, I'm probably pulling mental science a bit thin with this explanation, but it is very similar to telep uh, telepathy. Uh, they are it the screams you're hearing is an inverse wave meant to cancel out. If that makes any sense. In a Star Trek y way, yeah. yes. Can I take, can I replicate one of those, um, the neuro emitters that we had taken on that? And I basically want to adjust the frequency to see if I, I'm doing this actually on myself, so I can try to stop it on me before experimenting on another patient. Okay. Um, I want to see if I can block out the screams from the neuro emitters that we had created before mm. to see if I can okay. adjust it. Do you, you see what I'm trying to say? I do see. Um, so if you want to spend two momentum to gain the advantage, I will let it go that way. Um, Absolutely. Or... We will go that route. Okay. I... So you create the mental or the neuro inhibitors. Uh, with Dr. Abbott and Nurse Katok keeping watchful eye on you, uh, you stick it to your, uh, you stick it to your own uh, neural, uh, you stick it to your own head. Um, so at first you don't, you don't notice any difference, and then you make some adjustments. What is very interesting, at least to you, it's probably terrifying to anyone else, but it's interesting to you, is that I'm as sure. As you turn the um, tinnitus, the mental tinnitus scream down, uh, it's revealing a second, or a second uh, stream gets louder. We are out. We are free. We are out. We are free. We are out. And a voice that is Token very to similar to what you have uh, encountered before. Sulkin. To Brit or Con or to, yeah. to Ops. Ops. Uh, this is the captain. Go ahead. The prisoners have been freed. Oh. I'll end the communication and I'll start replicating. These, uh, I'll start with the children and try to, not that the screaming, we will be free or free, it's going to help them, but at least it'll start calming down some of the patients and possibly trying to get them relaxed. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Abbott, please uh, administer sedatives while I create these neural blockers. Yes, doctor. Uh, you should also be at three momentum because you spent uh, two for the advantage. Thank you. Oh. Uh, the uh, Commander Dalrum, you are watching your children sort of screaming and writhing, and they sort of fall into a deep, um, remless sleep as uh, Dr. Abbott hisses the hypospray against their necks. Apatu is just holding onto your hand tightly. Dorum's going to do what he can to calm down uh, Apatu, but also knowing that he is quite frightened himself. As is expected. <clears throat> so, uh, up on the bri or up on operations, Captain, uh, Lieutenant Zock, or sorry, Specialist Zock, which is now backed up by Lieutenant Deckard's uh, What's the phrase I'm looking for? Ultra detailed uh, scans of the transwarp hub. Uh, you're noticing two very worrisome things. 
well, several worrisome things, but we'll knock off one or two of them at, at this moment. Uh, the first is that the Thunderheads are increasing in size and chaoticness. Uh, they're starting to broadcast all sorts of interesting, colorful um, emissions. Uh, the second is that your sensors are unable to penetrate the um, uh, penetrate the thunderheads. And third is that they are roiling upwards. They're roiling up the arm of the transwarp hub. And at this, where is Zach? Lakila. We'll just put him at auxiliary. Uh, Verity is stunned. Ah, Captain, with the whatever that thing is, it's it's not killing them. I'd sense something that's erasing them. I don't know. I've never felt anything like this, Captain. There, it's exterminating the Borg. Or exterminate the interlink. I can't explain Command it. Commander, if we're going to try and save as much of the interlink as we can, you better put that plan that you came up with into effect um, about 10 minutes ago. Aye, aye, Captain. Okay. Uh, what does said plan involve? Said plan is basically going to. Rev probably have to use every ship that we have currently, the entire support fleet, to basically try to use each ship to um, shoot out like a um, shield, or like a def almost like a deflector shield or a barrier shield around each of the openings of the transwarp hub. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is going to require a Let's roll a daring plus engineering to come up with the shield harmonics, etc. to use. This is going to be a difficulty of three. Mm -hmm. uh, the station can assist with computers engineering. And I, I have a strange question for you, Keevan. Okay. Uh, would you be okay with Nia taking the lead on this? Considering it's daring engineering, and my dare, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. And my daring's only eight. Uh, maybe. Uh, he's shooting at a fifteen with daring engineering. I mean, I do have to deflector technology that w should theoretically work, though, as as a focus. Right. Um. I have. Uh, Nia would probably have a uh, performance enhancement. Uh, I'm thinking more, I think deflectors or shields would be a better one in this instance. Gotcha. Well, we're going to just give this a shot. Okay. okay. And how about uh, using momentum for a third die? Okay. Oh, I am fine with that. All righty. Would you want the ship to assist, or would you rather have Zok? Because I have daring eleven and engineering five. Yeah, oh let's let's God. use yeah, yeah let's have Zach to, you know, support. Okay. okay. Oh, uh, maybe that's, not. <laughs> that's five successes. Okay. Nice. <laughs> okay. You did you did the thing, Kevin. I'm proud of you. You did the thing. <laughs> I oh, did do the thing. That's uh, that's two momentum right now and three. That's, nice. Yeah. Uh, once again, you are maxed out on momentum, I believe. Uh, five. We're at five, but we're oh, pretty five. close to being pretty darn up. close. Okay. So, now is the Arion assisting, or is the Arion just going to be? I would say the Arion would assist. Okay. Uh, the, limitless, the Limitless Latinum is still sulking and refusing to answer your hails until you give them permission to actually go through the treacherous thunderclouds of potential death and destruction. But, 
uh, the other six uh, ships uh, will take up a position around the ever With the Roosevelt and the Apophis going to MVAN? Uh, they could, sure. Just to provide more coverage of a shielding. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, that's not going to work that way. <clears throat> okay. So, for a few seconds, it appears t they have... Are they encased the shield? Are they encased the transwarp hubs with a um, beamed out deflector capability? Which, for a few seconds, appears to work. I say for a few seconds because uh, within about five minutes of this, uh, two ships, uh, the, let's see, number three and number four, which would have been uh, the USS Hawking and the USS Perseus. Uh, their, you guys' deflector dishes are basically destroyed, overloaded. They go kaboom. And causing the whole thing to fail, and the storm, the storm cloud continues to roll, roil up the arm. Captain Lawn to Cerberus Station. Our deflector dish has been completely destroyed, and the deflector shield ray has essentially fallen apart. This is Kraya and the Perseus. Our main deflector has gone down as well. Our auxiliary deflector is not enough to hold the field. And Crawford almost like semi out of character for how he's acted on Hop. Sort of like slams his fist on a console. Damn it! This, this thing keeps going. We're going to lose a decent. We're going to lose the inner link. This is Captain Alhabid of the Polar Stern. It's running up our deflector beam, sir. I I can't get it. Disengage. Disengage, damn it! And those are the last words of the USS Polar Stern. Whatever it was, or the, you see uh, long forks of lightning slide its way up and into the uh, USS Polar Stern's deflector dish, and literally the ship sort of sucks into itself as if it is entering into a black hole before bursting out in all sorts of interesting colors and shapes. Damn it. Keventhal support ships disengage the shielding. <clears throat> they disengage and they book it. Uh, at this point, uh, whoever is manning the science console, which I suspect at this point is Mr. Deckard, um, Let's actually get some scans of this thing, shall we? Um, so, Lieutenant Deckard, or maybe Lakila, since Lakila is in operations and has all sorts of neat, possibly relevant focuses. This is going to be an insight science difficulty of three. I can do be Hila. Um Sensor operations, astronomical phenomena for Hila's mm. focuses. Sensor operations, definitely, yes. Uh, the the station can assist with sensor science. And this is going to be a difficulty three. And what is Ela rolling? Uh, insight science. All right. He's shooting for a 15. He's going to use a um, momentum for a third die because he is cautious. Okay. That's a good one. Let's see. Oh. Ooh, there you go, Ela. Yeah. Uh, and you said it was, what, sensor science? Sensor science, yes. Uh, so that will max you out on momentum. I oh, no, shall sorry, roll for the station. Uh, so that's currently one more momentum, I'm sorry. And let's see if the station maxes you out. And, <laughs> yep. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, so that is... Station crits, huzzah! <laughs> so we're, at, we're, at... we're at max with one floating. Yep, one <laughs> floating. So um, as science officer right now, Lakila, you can get one free question. And then you'll have one floating momentum, which might be another question. Anyways, so what you're, so this is a this is a phenomenon that you've only read about. Um, what happens when two completely different uh, fields of physics interact with one another? 
Um, the reason you can't penetrate, your sensors cannot penetrate this thundercloud is that whatever is going on inside it is com is obeying a completely different set of, la of laws and physics. Um, all that you're able... All that you're able to get from it is uh, what the event horizon is showing you. And what that seems to be is a forcible attempt f uh, where, or a forcible, uh, I'm just going to call it a physics field, where one attempt, where the, uh, where the alien physics is either over, is either overwriting or being overwritten by the prevailing physics field and right now because it's getting bigger that is there whatever that thundercloud is is winning oh boy uh got it and uh, you have uh one free question all right free question since Ela was on the Arion and got scans from the pylon, mm -hmm. could he like run a simulation to see what those emissions from the pylon were doing ah. and how they would interact with the cloud? Ah, an interesting question. I will say that uh, yes. Um, that's going to probably be more of an extended task kind of thing, but you believe that there is merit to running this test. All right, he's going to start um, doing that. And since we have one floating momentum, mm -hmm. anybody have any kind of questions? I kind of have one, but it's going to... or I have its thoughts on process of doing things once the extended task is done. So hmm. if anybody has any questions. I kind of do. I'm wondering if with the scans... And we collected on the Arian, and would it be time, do you think, that we could actually contact the warden and basically see if there's anything? Basically, I think, from my point of view, time to waken the warden up again and make contact with them to see if we can get this under control. So uh, would that be spending two to create an advantage to talk to the warden uh now that would um there is a bit of a gm fiat slash world bit preventing that because communications to the pylon are well it took you guys a long time to get there and communications simply didn't work uh you you have the location of the closest pylon um but that's still technically within the nebula but not as far, so it would only be a few hours' journey. Well, would that be part of the extended task to try to contact them? I'm... Or would it be its own little thing of us trying to relay through the area onto the uh, pylon? I would say that it could go... It could either be Lakila attempting to convert the station to do what he wants to do, or you could go and or you or you could go and talk to the warden um those would be two separate tasks so oh, they could be a, they could be done si simultaneously or one after the other assuming the whatever the heck that thing is doesn't take note of your little station spoiler alert it will but <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense um could Ela give the uh kind of the scans that we got off the Arion and the pylon of the different frequencies that are being emitted by the um, various uh, nodes in the nebula and give them to Verity to transmit to the interlink so that they could make kind of small uh, shield, <clears throat> shields along the transwarp to hopefully slow it down. That would involve uh, you linking the station's computers to the Arions, which you haven't done yet, but you certainly can. Or taking Verity to the Arion. That would work, too. I know the information. I can take the Borg there. 
Do okay. it, Zach. All right. Okay, so we have the Tellarite and the Borg heading to the Arion. Uh, and we have Lakila starting to do something with... Uh, um, Shield frequency. Right. With frequencies. Okay, so this is going to be a work track of, of 18, a uh, diff <laughs> of 4, res of 4, and a uh, magnitude of four so um insight science control science reason you know basically whatever you want slash science would be good roles um station can assist with structure engineering structure science um that sort of stuff um or other people can assist engineering would be a good task too for personnel who want to do something along this line I'm looking at different ways to improve Lakila with a talent mm. for this session. Okay, so while you go through, uh, while you quickly scan through the talents stuff, let's head to the Bri, or let's head to. Um, what am I looking for here? I'm looking for the bridge of the Arion. And I was gonna say as I, as we're going, I was like, uh. Yo, Tin Can, I need your help on board the ship. I got your girlfriend, and we need to have a little backup. Um, so say it, the cautious Tellarite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Demos, you get the most interesting call. I'm just... Okay. And what do you need from security? I need your little droid, and I need some backup. Meet us on the Ariane, if you will. <laughs> Just thinks for a second, like, backup. Okay. Okay, so, uh, Demos, you set foot onto the uh, bridge of the uh, Arion to find special Zack standing up at one of the consoles simply because he's a little too um over eager right now to sit uh, <laughs> verity is looking over her sh over uh, standing over him and looking over his head at the spools of data that are running across the uh, arion's display why am i needed I wanted you back up if just in case things need to be shot. <laughs> Not to mention your little floaty thing. Minus... Can it help me hack? Minus Bob's uh, up and down. Uh, no, he's pretty much limited to working on me. I have small. F I have a small uh, cutter beam. Which could be used to hack something into smaller pieces. Hey, uh, just so you know, uh, Solgan slash Zack, <laughs> Mia's a decent hacker. <laughs> he very much is. Oh, yes. Okay. He has an experimental <laughs> device for that shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, so, Mr. Nia, you are busy down in the reactor room, just pacing around, trying to figure out how you can be of help. When all of a sudden, without even asking, a uh, transporter effect brings you <laughs> on board the USS Arion. Arion! <laughs> on the bridge! <laughs> um, first off, what the hell? Surprise! Two, uh, why am I needed? Well, I'll put it this way. We just opened a Pandora's box, and I right. kind of... And I thought maybe we're going to try to control her and lock her up. <sighs> ah. Oh, good thing I have this then. And he kind of holds up a... Basically, it almost kind of looks like a thumb drive. It's like, I like to call it my master key, if you will. Okay. 
Okay. Hey, so, lad, hop on this, hop on this terminal and see what you can do. We have some scans that we kind of try to help the Borg try to wake up and protect their asses. On it, and he'll just kind of take the seat beside Zach and start working. Okay. Uh, so, what is the end goal of this? We're gonna try to use the technology to, from that we the scans that we got from inside the cube or the the obelisk to try to protect the inner link. Okay, so that does sound like uh, part of the same work track. So um, let's do a roll first for Lakila, assuming you have figured out a good uh, thing for Lakila. I'm gonna give Lakila testing a theory. So as he we progress through it for. Uh, as long as he continues to succeed on tasks where he previously succeeded at with the same scientific or technological field, he gets a uh, bonus D20. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. Uh, so he we'll... also has he also has a mental repository. Which one does that? So, do? uh, two intervals become one. Or uh, this character can take time to focus during a task. Two intervals during a time task. Uh, they reduce the difficulty of a task by one on success. I don't think we have the time for testing or for mental repository to be used right now. Well, I also have cautious science. Yeah. So, okay. Let's see. It's difficulty four. Difficulty of four. Um, four. I will allow you to be assisted by two others. Uh, so maybe Mr. Deckard and the station, perhaps. Um. Okay. Well, he's. Ilya is going to pop his uh, determination. Oh, okay then. Every cool. pro- every problem has a solution. Yes, yes it does. Okay. Uh, so, insight science, insight engineering. Whoever wants to get Deckard, probably Demos. And the station, uh, the station can assist with. Um, let's roll structure engineering for the station. Anybody I've... opposed of Ilya buying an additional dice for cautious? Uh, I'm not. I'm not opposed. I'm it's, good with it. it. Two momentum. Right. I Quiet. mean, we'll probably get it back anyway. So. Um, oh, you had to say that. Center <laughs> operation physics anomaly astronomical phenomena. Mm-hmm. Just Ilya. Yep. Well, that's a lot of failures. Well, that's two, that's two crit successes and two crit failures. Yep. I got two, two 20s and, a, and two ones. Yeah. Um, uh, so we're going to re-roll an inside science for the cautious. Okay. And Deckard's doing the same thing? Yeah, yep. Deckard can do, in, in, yep. Deckard can do inside okay. science. Ilya's rolling 20s and 1s today, everybody. Uh, uh, sorry, what was that? Shizno? Uh, since uh, that could be inactivated, I'm using uh, his science, and I'm bumping his science from a 4 to a 5. Cool. Nice. I'd... Six, seven. Board computer system does the focus? I'll let that I'll let that go this time, yeah. Because okay. you're trying to interface with their system. <laughs> oh my god. What that's the? Awesome. That's nine so, successes? Nine successes and a crit fail. Nine successes and a crit fail. Wow. That's and a... a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> one, one, two. No, okay, next time I blatantly <laughs> cheat, I'm not telling you people, because apparently... Um... <laughs> Roll20 just wants to give you the big middle finger, and well, it's just like... So, okay. We have what? So we have... We, we have, have a, a lot of... of nine, we have a total of nine momentum currently, so we have three so... floating momentum. Yeah. The, uh, um, so definitely we're going to use two of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> two of them to knock resistance down to zero. So we still have a single floating momentum. You do, yes. So, so Ela's going to roll seven challenge die. That's right. Okay. And re-roll all those <laughs> zeros. zeros. There goes the floating. <laughs> there goes the third floating. Uh, there, beautiful. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. And to. And to everybody watching, when whoever's not on the speaker is probably laughing your ass, their asses off right now. <laughs> okay, so that is a grand total of uh, six work done toward the track, I believe. And a breakthrough. 
And a breakthrough. Yes, indeed. So let's do... Uh, that's going to knock that difficulty down. Okay, so... Based on only your contributions to this at the moment, Lakila, as you're still waiting for the stuff from the Arion to show up. Um, <clears throat> so what the... So, ah, I'm just trying to figure out what pres how precisely to say this. Uh, the energy frequencies that the ship wa or that the pylons were generating or actually no let me start this fresh so you notice a few things uh the first is now that you know what you're looking for you're able to fine tune the sensors enough to detect the communication links between the pylons uh located tied into janus 3 um i forget the exact number so i'll say it's roughly nine I believe there's about 150 pylons or so, minus three, all tied into Janus 3's head through a tight beam communication of uh, tachyons, nadions, and other ions particles that you're not entirely sure what they are. Uh, so you figured that part out. Uh, you've also f figured out how to at least come to a facsimile of the of the energy signal that will transmit to and from. Uh, you also come to realize that there is a massive amount, uh, that there is a much larger, wide, or a much larger, more powerful series of these emissions jutting out from the now open mouth of the uh, Janus 3, pointing d directly towards the... Um, Thunderclouds, the physics shape thing. Um, however, it is not... Uh, you suspect it's some form of containment beam, but it doesn't seem to be doing its job. I believe that is what you figured out from this current breakthrough. So, uh, let's go to Team Arion. Yeah. Which will be Zach, Naya, mm -hmm. and probably someone can roll for the uh, Arion. Uh, so, uh, yes, sir, go ahead. So, um, inside engineering, daring engineering, control engineering, mm -hmm. blank engineering, and okay. the ship uh -huh. and the ship will assist with computers engineering. I'll roll for the ship. Okay. Let's see, I'll have Nia take the lead with daring engineering. Mm -hmm. Um. I guess what his goal would be here is we have an idea of what the signal is from the Janus 3 mouth, right? Yes. Um, I think Nia, in this case, would probably want to work on essentially taking that signal and essentially make it emit the opposite of what it's emitting now, or at least start working towards that. Okay. Okay. So let's so let's see here. So daring engineering. Um since I have my experimental device and I do believe that this task would probably require a bit of hacking. Mm hmm Um, it is difficulty one for me. Ooh. I mean no, difficulty two. Okay. Because I have an advan always have an advantage. But the complication range for me is increased by two. Yes, it has. And I'm just gonna spend a couple more points of that. Uh, I'll spend one more point of the threat to... Actually, no, I can't do that in this instance. Because you've already uh -huh. increased it, I'd have to spend more threat than I have to increase it further. So... Okay. No. Ooh, and I have Miracle Worker as a talent. This is going to be fun. Jesus! <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so there's that. Uh, alien technology, firewalls as a focus. Uh, let's run alien tech. Okay. Um... So. Yeah, let's let's try and knock this the hell out of the park. Um, I'm gonna pop his determination. Okay. Uh, for any machine is my plaything. Okay. <laughs> that has been his universal. <laughs> he has popped that at one a lot. Yes. Yeah, he very much has. Would you um, like him third dice? Uh, that increased complication range and the fact that I already have the successes I need just with popping the determination, I don't want to risk it. Aww. <laughs> Alright, so I need to take the lead. Zach and Arion can assist. 
Uh, Nothing from the ship. <clears throat> Nothing extra from Nia. Uh, let's that's see. A... That's one crit fail one, from that's Nia. That's one complication. Yeah, yep. one, co one complication from Nia. But that is four successes total. Four successes total. Okay, so if you could please roll me seven challenge dice. I very much will. Uh, do we want to shave off that resistance with our some of our momentum? Works. I think so well, here. Yeah. What did you... You made it, what, a difficulty two? <laughs> two. That's just for me. Yes, but, but you got I four have successes, mirror. so... Well, but you got four successes on this task. But that so that so brings had, us back up to six. Well, no, we had we were at six. So I'm saying we're using your two floating momentum to shape oh, the resistance. But I didn't use the two momentum for an extra dice. I'm confused. Right, I did. I was taking them away to take away the resistance. But if we have two floating momentum, we don't. I don't think so. Yeah. Well, we do. We do now. We had the six. Oh, and okay. Then... Gotcha. 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 Yep. Okay. Yep. My bad. Yeah. So boom. Okay. Ooh. So I have Miracle Worker, so that's two breakthroughs. Okay. That's interesting indeed. Okay, so this is going to bring the work track down to four. And that knocks, uh, let's see, difficulty down to two. Yep. Um, two breakthroughs, so difficulty yep. one. Um, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. I believe that's <laughs> accurate. Okay, so. Uh, so what you have... Um, how to phrase this. So, by working some magic, by figuring out what has failed in the... or by analyzing what has failed with this... with Keevan's first attempt at coordinating a defense, um, how the shape broke through the uh, shield... the shield wall, and what it's currently doing to the poor Borg transwarps has given you at least an inkling of an idea, despite, you know, not being an astrometrics or astro, bah, astrophysics level PhD, you've picked up enough this long being on server station that you have an idea of what's going on. Uh, you're able to coordinate uh, that tied into the Arion's scan of the pylons and the energy being used. You believe that you have enough to not only or you believe that there's two things going on. One, um, the, well, let's, one, remember the gravimetric shifts that were go, that were happening that have been basically a constant of station life ever since you moved here? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those have stopped. Oh. Um, it might be an effect of the gateway shedding excess power. Or maybe shunting it. Uh, two, uh, the second breakthrough is that the reason that the Janus 3 head is not acting as a full containment system is because it doesn't, it's not operating at full power. Probably because three of the nodes are destroyed. I see. Um, the problem is, is that it re will require a significant amount of power. So best you could do is to attempt to... Um, you know, drive the ships into overdrive, eh, drive what remain what ships remain into overdrive, and put them back on defense. The problem is is that this is not going to be a. Um, it's might be a suicide for some of them. After all, you saw what it did to the USS Arm Arm or USS Polar Stern. And he'll he'll talk to the person he knows best, uh, Chief Petty Officer Nia to Commander Keevan. This is Keevan. Go ahead. Um, do you want the good news or the bad news first? How about both pieces of news as quickly as possible? Okay, so um, McCall, what did you say? It was the gravity. It was something with gravity. Gravimetric and shifts. Gravimetric okay, shifts. Um, we're experiencing some heavy gravimetric shifts. Um, so No, no, you're not experiencing gravimetric shifts. Oh, we are not experiencing them. And that's the problem. Or no. Well, more of a symptom. Gotcha. So 
we're not experiencing graphometric shifts. Um, figured out how we can possibly drive this thing back. The bad news is it might be suicide for some of the support fleet. In what way? What do we need to do? Um, essentially, do the same thing again, but we would need to put the ships into overdrive. That is definitely not going to be healthy for many of them. Demos, can you hear me? Demos here. I think we, if we need to use something that's an overcharge, we might have to use the Apollo. For what, racing something? It's got the twin cores, in, the twin warp cores in it. That thing could put out enough energy that it could seriously be used as the spearhead to keep this going together. Out of character, <laughs> Shizno, I'm not really trying to destroy the air of the Apollo. I just think that this might be the only way we got this to go. It doesn't have much in other departments. That's the thing. If we need that kind of power, let's get, we're going to get the captain on this. You know, let's let's do this. We have to keep this at bay. This is not going to. This is not. We got to keep this together. Okay. okay. And don't think I haven't Try. forgotten about the complication. I've already taken note of what the complication is. Oh, good. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, out of character, I think I have an idea for what I want to try and do for the final part of the extended task. Mm -hmm. Um, Is to maybe, rather than... Uh, hmm. Rather than change Janus 3's like signal to transmit the opposite of what it is, maybe try and find a way to essentially let it act as a maybe a secondary power conduit for the ships that are using the deflector array. Ah, like a focusing array. Sort of, yeah. Interesting idea. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be Lakila and Nia working together. Which is ironic, because their names both rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Miss uh, Lakila from the station, and Nia from the ship. Um, if you could please roll me a... Which one of you wants to take the lead on this? Sounds like Nia has an idea. Nia feel... has an idea. That's a scary thought. <laughs> <laughs> last time Don't that worry happened... About uh, it. Last, last time that happened, Rami turned into a fish. That's Don't true. worry That's about true. it. Don't worry about it. This is a good idea. This time. It was a joke. It was just a joke it. last time. It was, it was just a prank, guys. It was just a prank. <laughs> <laughs> so Nia, Nia has an idea. Ela can assist because I think Nia, you actually have higher when it, you roll for engineering than I do for yeah. insight. Because my insight, reason, and control science would be a fifteen. I'm rolling a 15 if I do daring engineering, but I'm rolling a 16 if I do control engineering. And you have Miracle Worker. Yeah. Uh, Although we only need yeah. four. Let's see here. Okay, yeah, so we'll have Nia take the lead on this. Okay. <sighs> Can hmm. I have insight sciencing this? Uh, ins insight or control sciencing. It's the same number. Okay. Um. Do you want momentum, Nia? I I'm thinking of a thing. Hold on. Um. I would like to challenge one of Nia's values. Oh. Uh, which value is that? Um. Better to beg for forgiveness than to ask permission. Okay. Uh. Are you actually? I suppose you're asking permission to do this? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you burn that. Uh, so at the end of the finale, you'll create another value if we ever see Nia again. Yeah. If he survives. I mean. <clears throat> All right. So that's what? Auto two successes. Yeah. 
Um, would this still technically be hacking? Um, not in this instance. Okay, I I just asked from the perspective of I'm making Janus three do something that's not really its intended purpose. So I'm actually viewing it as you're using it for its actual intended purpose. You're just punching more stuff into it. But fair. Um, then. Uh, let's see. Uh, alien technology, computers, or performance enhancement is a focus. Sounds like you're doing performance enhancement, actually. So that'll Huzzah. work. Huzzah! All right, so that's two successes, and it's only a oh yeah, it's only difficulty one. Huzzah! And mm -hmm. Difficulty one, and Ela and Ela's you already, already have two. Two. You have two already, so we're looking already at four successes. And let's see what else I get. And there's hey, another three. Hey, let's go. So that's uh, seven successes. So, so we are now we at 12 momentum. momentum. Six so shave off resistance. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's let's just see where my challenge dice take us first. I mean, here. it's always possible you'll blank, but nope. Oh no, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, we so what do we want to do with this four floating momentum? Four floats. Can I? <laughs> Ooh, can I? Ooh. Oh, sorry. Gate jumper. Great. What you got? I... Oh wait. I would like, I would oh. like to spend two of that to create an advantage. Uh, hang on. What was that gate jumper? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say that I would like to, since the original plot was to go onto the ship, was try to access the pylon and get a communication link mm -hmm. to the the warden. Um, I would like to, as he's been hacking, I would like to use two of them to create the advantage that I've been able to send a connection to the uh, okay. gatekeepers. Okay, cool. And then I would also like to create the advantage of uh, essentially being able to uh, get further into this thing's like mechanics. Okay. And essentially... Uh, letting it overclock a little bit so maybe it can compensate a little more for the power that's being drawn from the ships. Okay. Okay. Not where I thought about going, but I like yeah. it because I was thinking about creating an advantage to launch probes to also admit a similar field that the pylons are creating to help disrupt it. I'd also like to create an advantage by gaining on the Apollo. <laughs> I mean, you can certainly Let's, do that. Let's go. All the advantages. Let's go. <laughs> Since we're just spending all the momentum. <laughs> I, this is not where I was expecting this session to go, but why should I have expectations at this point? Okay. I, right. I feel like we're essentially turning into the Nova Corps from Guardians of the Galaxy, how they would make <laughs> that net of just energy with their ships. This is yeah. basically what we're doing. <laughs> it sounds like it. Okay. So, see, I, I want to do a, from the Apollo. I want to get a cut screen I'm of everybody, like, pow, like a, um, like the Power Rangers thing, and then, oh, you know, oh god, or Voltron, yeah, or Voltron, yeah, or Voltron. Or Voltron. yes, all this is like forming up, you know, all these different <laughs> okay. advantages, or yeah, I'm just using my mind to go to the Apollo. <laughs> okay. Oh, so it's minor. It's not going to be a yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just being a goober because everyone's making. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had four. We might as well. So, okay. So we don't have to do the like mine of the probes. I just thought that would be a good way to also. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. It would increase like if you. I mean, it would, again, it would be like increasing. Yeah, I'm picturing like when the Death Star fires, how it's a bunch of little beams <laughs> that like all compose into one beam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so from what I'm hearing, we're basically spending. All of the momentum we have to create advantages. <laughs> cool. Yes, I mean we're at four, but yeah, let Ela will help uh, program probes and launch them from the station to help uh, uh, strengthen the signals being produced. Okay, cool. So while all that is happening, Zach, uh, <laughs> I they're they're busy talking talking techno babble. You find yourself just saying, ah, sod it all, heading to the communication station. And you're beginning to attempt to tap in attempt to tap into the communications system in the or attempting to tap into the pylon that is closest to the station, which is still um, several uh, hundred 
I, I mean, we looked this up last time. I forget exactly how many <laughs> kilometers away it is, but it's still in within the nebula. Sun but, to Pluto or something yeah. like that. Sun to Pluto. 35 AU. Yeah. Significant. Um, normally, I'd have a roll, but you roll, but you decided to spend momentum. So you have a. Uh, while they're doing their thing, uh, the screen uh, goes blank, or the main view screen goes blank, and once again, the space illithids have a heavily pixelated, although it comes across slightly clearer now. Uh, its image is a appears greetings you have, warden you have connected again <laughs> the the crawl have escaped this is unfortunate yeah can it help us put them back in the box the warden has begun reactivation process all can all components are traveling to this location. They will arrive in, by your calendar, two weeks. Can can Mia hear this conversation? Oh yes, absolutely. Oh yeah, there's a there's a huge like projection of a giant oh. tentacle creature on the bridge. Oh, uh, <coughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> Greetings. Um, we're working on something to. That, that'll hopefully hold these prisoners back until those can get here. And it seems like we're actually having, I wouldn't go as far as to say an easy time, but we're making some really good progress. Is there anything you can do to help us? I have been analyzing your species data systems ever since the, ever since for connection was established. It is uncertain. This ship does not possess the capabilities necessary to hold back the crawl. Weapon systems are too primitive. You do not have null energy weaponry capability. Uh, what's null energy weapons? Null energy is the only form of weaponry known to combat species outside of uh, this universe's physical f or laws of physics. Ah, in, I see. In order to dis, there is one point of destruction, or when, when calcul, uh, despite the wildly differing laws of physics, the concept of nothing is constant between all, no, all unknown sets of physics. Null energy is based on that principle. Ah. So. Is there anything we can do? <laughs> From this ship, negative. What if there's six of them? Odds will increase significantly to 10%. And what if we were to use... I assume this thing knows what Janus 3 is. Oh, maybe. they created them. Oh, yeah. They created them. Um, the thing that we call Janus 3, um, I've essentially upgraded it. It's probably a... Uh, it's a term you can use. But um, I've essentially upgraded it to act as a compensator, along with providing more power to those ships. Does that increase our odds at all? Your modifications are primitive. And may... And will provide a small advantage. Nia sort of slumps whenever he hears that the warden say primitive. <laughs> no. Te technically, it's a Salak. The uh, warden is j what they call Janus 3. Ooh, my apologies. No apologies needed. Understanding that primitive communications cause mix up. Well, this primitive life form has another question for you. What if you use the station as a central point to close it? Unfamiliar with stations tactical and or unfamiliar with stations tactical capabilities. 
please upload to station computer system. At this point, uh, Jer uh, Jaron, your USB hacking drive literally vibrates. Okay. Um, that's probably not good. Well, it depends on whose side of the GM screen you're on. Um, <laughs> that scares me more. <laughs> uh, fearing this thing exploding or doing something dangerous... Um, he's going to attempt to pull it out to see if it'll even come out? Oh, it pops out quite easily. Is it still vibrating? No. Huh. Well, that was weird. Yes, Demos, phrasing. <clears throat> uh, I love it. Uh, I I'll look over some scans real quick. Are are my upgrades still as as I planned out? Uh your yes. It actually appears that the new near field communication uh, on the uh, universal on the uh, hacking device has been improved. Uh okay. <laughs> I guess now uh... he's. I both mm -hmm. like and don't like that. <laughs> I don't know what that means, and I'm scared. <laughs> um, I think we need to do what he says. I think we need to use the captain and give this thing access to the station. Um, that doesn't seem like the best idea to me. I don't know. I'm pretty cautious. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of raises and Neo raises an eyebrow just like are you though <laughs> and I guess Neo will just sort of tap his comm badge um this is Chief Petty Officer to Neo to Captain Crawford this is Crawford go ahead so um, here's the thing. We might have a way of giving ourselves a better chance, but this entity that was shown to you earlier, um, it needs access to the station schematics. Um, in what way? And Neo will just sort of look over to Zack and like raises both eyebrows quizzically like yeah in what way complete uh sir this thing needs complete access to the station schematics and Crawford will kind of Wait, is Dorum no Dorum's in Med Bay right now, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so Keevan's probably the next. So mm. technically, right now, Keevan's second in command. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Crawford will sort of just look over to Keevan. Um, it it seems suspicious, but it might be the best chance we have. Captain, I think it's the only chance we have. I think what we Granted. need to do, I think yeah, I think we need to get it in into the system and pa I think what we need to do is get Mayloon Rami prepared, have it integrate with Rami as fast as possible because one AI, AI can interact with the other. Out of game, everybody. I'm sorry. I think I'm, we're gonna kill Rami. Of course, yeah. That's. Uh, uh, Captain or have a really ugly looking Rami walking around. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Crawford to Rami. Yes, Captain. Um, in order to give us the best chance possible to hold this thing back, um, this, I believe they called themselves a Salak? 
And that thing can probably hear it since he still yes. has a communication open with Nia. Yes. Yeah. Ah. Um, would might need to integrate with your AI system to give us a good chance. Are you okay with that? I can... I'm completely understanding that you have come to anthropomorphize me over the last uh, year. But I am simply a tool. If this is what is necessary to ensure your survival, of course I am okay with it. I'm okay. sort of excited, actually. Thank you, Rami. You are welcome, Captain. And with that, she winks out of existence. Forever? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no! uh, Are you ready, Captain? I'm Captain let... Crawford to Chief Petty Officer Nia. Permission fully granted to give the Salike access to all station schematics. And Nia's just sort of like, gives a look of like, oh. And then turns, looks like you've got permission. Right, uploading now, and I'll set up a link of the to the uh, station. Excellent. So, um, I had made a note that there was a complication during all of this, Good. and during the complication of all of this, Good. it takes the shape takes note, and it begins to move in your direction with okay. a bit so God. of speed. And on that, we're going to go take a bio break. Uh, let's be back in about 10 minutes if possible, so quarter past the hour. Okay. And I will Alrighty. see all of you guys then. And we are back. So, um, Lakila, Deck, and Deckard both take note of the shifting direction of the storm cloud shape thing as it begins to move, or stretch, sorry, elongate itself. Sort of like a nasty, sort of like a Spider Man web, except, you know, all sorts of nasty colors and shocking lights and anti physics stuff coming out of it. Uh, it's heading towards the station at approximately half impulse speed. Um, by your estimation, it'll be here probably within the next uh, five, ten minutes. Be now! Mm -hmm. Captain, I feel... Uh, Rami appeals, appears on the bridge without prompting. This tickles. I'm not... I... Her eyes go Why? I think I'm... I think I'm scared. And she material. Okay. <laughs> and she uh, she's replaced by a holographic version of a what you assume to be a Salak. It is. It stands approximately eight feet tall. Uh, very very slim body proportions. Elongated arms, legs. Uh, the arms end in. Uh, two long fingers and one actually double length thumb that seems to have like four different four joints that can roll in on itself oh that's not weird at all no not at all uh two elongated <clears throat> or two long spindly legs uh that end in sort of like starfish feet hmm. um and a overly an ovaloid head uh eyes that are deep red in color and four octopus-like tentacles where its mouth should be. You Inter must be the Salak. Integration complete. I... Uh, linguistic database absorbed. Communications algorithms online. Greetings, Captain Crawford. My programmers 
gave me a name similar to that of Virtue. You may address me as such, or Salak. Virtue sounds a little more human. So... This thing is heading towards us and we'll be here in about five to ten minutes. So what exactly can we do to protect our station? Analysis complete. Replicator technology. Very interesting. Salak had never thought of replicator technology. An odd oversight, considering. Uh, Commander Keevan, uh, you are receiving a priority alert from the docking bays, uh, where Dry Dock 3 has just become active, which is very weird because there's no ship currently in Dry Dock 3. Okay, I monitor Dry Dock 3. Station, conf station contains weaponry transphasic torpedo this should be adequate in slowing down the crawl it will be insufficient to stop weapon design schematics have been allocated copied codified enhanced yes he looks at Captain Crawford. The crawl will not destroy this station immediately. They are hostile. They do not acknowledge the laws of physics. But you must hold out for replication to be completed. And how long should that take? Calculating. Given current power allocations to docking bay or dry dock three, 45 minutes. The cr firing torpedoes will slow the will uh, will slow the crawl, but it will be insufficient. They will be here in 20 minutes, assuming optimal firing situation. And it's at this point that um, uh, Lakila, as you're currently in operations, uh, you get or you are seeing messages from the uh, which one is it? The Apophis I believe it is. Yes. Uh, the Apophis under the captaincy of uh, Captain Vohal. Uh, she has two words or she gives you two lines of text. Non-essential personnel have been transported onto the USS Roosevelt. Engaging. Farewell. Ela will turn to the captain. Captain, the Apophis is heading towards the entity. Open a hailing frequency to the Apophis. Attempting to, sir. You, uh... Captain uh, Mara Vohal is currently sitting on the... Commun is currently sitting at the navigation console. You notice that the bridge is empty. Captain Crawford. I need to look at support fleet captains real quick. And you said it was Vahal? Yep, Vahal. Vahal, you are not to engage that entity. Captain, you and I both know that if it reaches your st your station, you're dead. If... I know that, but we have plans in place. Are you willing to bet the lives of every single crew of all Starfleet and civilian personnel in this nebula to your plan, Captain? Yes, but we also need you... We also need you to be able to help hold up that deflector array. Hmm. Roll me presence... Uh, roll me a control plus command. Ooh, doki. And this is going to be an opposed versus her daring plus command. Let's see. Which is easy because she's not stabbing. No. Um, <laughs> uh, that's okay. Then I'm just going to 
Uh, let's see, because she's an ELH carried character, I'm going to assume that her daring is higher than her control. Okay. Roll 2d20. Uh, you have to you have to get two successes in order to uh, succeed. Is this a thing I should pop his determination on? No. Uh, yeah, I feel like there's going to be more important things coming up here. Um, give me just a second here. Okay. Just use some momentum. You'll get it back. <laughs> like the last time you said that, you oh, yeah. got two critical failures. So, you know, don't tempt fate. Um, I'll... No, we still got the momentum back that I spent. Uh, that is true. That's true. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll take one for a third dice. Okay. Uh, diplomacy is a focus. That'll work, sure. And that's three successes, so you get two momentum. Yep. Huzzah. You can literally see herself fighting herself. Not in a stop fight, not, not in a stop hitting yourself kind of motion, but <laughs> definitely uh, there is a war of determination going on. She finally hits the big red button. Uh, all three sections of the Apophis reform into one. And she takes her position back again with the fleet. You'd better be right about this, Captain, is all that she says. Hell, if you are, I'll endorse your promotion to Commodore. On that note, Dolrum walks back into the yep. ops. That would um, be two of us, Captain. I want to spend two momentum for an advantage. Oh, and what's the advantage? Deckard's been programmed a computer to replicate an isolytic torpedo. Oh, and what does an isolytic torpedo do? Let me look that up. Screws up subspace. Ooh. Breaks all sense of laws of physics. I uh, that's Oh. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Takes a warp core to seal the rift though. Oh god. <laughs> well, well, but we do have the Roosevelt and the Apophis each have three warp cores. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we probably have... have plenty of warp cores laying around if it does this. Yeah, you know. I can't believe you're using Star Trek insurrection. <laughs> hey, it, it's as much canon as that uh, Beverly Crusher candle uh, episode. So, yeah. Oh my god. Don't yeah. remember me of that one. Yeah. Yeah, that was a weird one. Okay, so you have a uh, ship, or you have, at some point, whether it has been the last 10 minutes or the last uh, year, uh, Deckard has <laughs> created an isolytic torpedo. Oh. Just. Just so everyone knows, this is a banned weapon that Deckard's working on. Yeah. Oh, oh God. yeah, yeah, I, I mean, realize that. I mean, if we have to use a banned weapon to stop this thing, I'm kind of chill with it. <laughs> Isn't one of I'm your cute. values uh, rules are meant to be broken? Yeah, some rules are made to be broken, even the Prime Directive. <laughs> okay. And apparently, <laughs> r rules of war. Yeah, you know, Shh, it's fine. It's fine, don't worry about it. It's fine. We won't need it. <laughs> okay. Maybe. <clears throat> okay. Oh, that that thing got bigger and less... Bigger uh, and it's uh, coming and the, closer. It got bigger and the resolution got smaller. <laughs> it, got, it got It, it got, got scratched. <laughs> so... Here, here's what I'm thinking, and this will have to be quick. Okay. Um, I almost think we should, we should use the isolytic torpedo as a last resort of sorts. Mm -hmm. I am down with firing a transphasic torpedo salvo. This goddamn thing. Sure, uh, that'll give me a three threat for if you want to use a full spread. But yeah, is everybody okay with that? <laughs> Yep. Sure. sure. It, Hold on, let me make a cautious check. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I need to look at a couple different things here. Yep. Uh, so I believe a spread just gives you an extra two challenge dice? Um, yeah, and then the transphasic torpedoes do a lot of damage. They do. Um, they would deal more if it was against Borg, but, you know, close enough. Yeah. Good. 
So I just said Dolrum's back on the the um, yeah on ops, and we've already said Demos is on the Aryan. Dolrum's the next best qualified person to fire. Um, I what's uh Dolrum's control security? A fourteen with a focus. Um, Dura's. Yeah, Dura's down in security office. Do you really want her to, you know? <laughs> Sprint all the way up here just to push the fire button. <laughs> uh, I mean, she'd be shooting for the same with a focus as well. So, yeah, we can just let Dolan do it. <clears throat> okay. I have Starfleet tactical system. Mm-hmm. Well, and Dolan has two determinations. This thing. He oh, does. Yes. Yes. He did. Oh yeah. yeah, you're. Yeah, you've been on the Apollo for a while now, Demos. What do you wish to do? Anything? I'm just. I thought I was being used for something. Oh no! They uh, uh, they were wondering who was going to push the fire button. You were the log- the first logical choice. But uh, yeah, Demos is on the Apollo. <clears throat> All right. So wait, is it? I thought torpedoes were daring security. Nope. Control no, security. No, they're still control security. Yep. Control security. I'm thinking. Okay. Okay. Control security. Control security. Uh, this is long range. I believe it is a difficulty three. Uh, station can assist with uh, weapon security. I'll grab the station. I'm going to give you a threat for a third die. Because I have. Oh yeah, bold he's got bold Dorum. security. Dolrum still has bold. All right, so weapon security for the station. And he's going to re-roll one of those. Okay, that is a grand total of three six or four successes. So, far. Oh, so he gets to re-roll one of those zeros, bold. So we'll see. Yeah. The amount of crits dropping in this session is. <laughs> 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 so that's six successes. The, so I, now we're capped on momentum. <laughs> you're capped on momentum for the third freaking time. <laughs> I I refer I refer to my quote from earlier tonight where I said McCall just says there will be a lot of GM cheating tonight and I'm just sitting here like I'm sorry I can hear you over the sound of all these crits. <laughs> <laughs> oh good lord. Okay. This game brought to you by the number 1. Okay, so <laughs> I get I believe I get th- uh four threat. Yeah. Threat? I believe I get three threat from a th- from a spread. And... But I gave you a threat for a third die. Oh, yes, that's right. I wasn't paying attention to that one. Cool. So I get more threat. Yay! Damn it, I'm honest. <laughs> um, I appreciate that. How many challenge die am I sending? Uh, let's... Uh, the base is nine. Yeah, the for base these is... For these torpedoes. Yeah. So it's nine challenge die. Yeah. But then doesn't he get extra from making it a salvo? I believe that's 11 total. Yes. Okay, that's you uh, anybody opposed to spending a momentum to reroll those uh I am zero? completely unopposed to it. I, I would suggest it. I agree with Gate Jumper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Uh four successes total. Because I can't remember sorry. what what these torpedoes have. Give me a second. Uh basically uh, they, they have can... high yield. Yeah. So that could do some things. <laughs> yeah. So we got a total of ten. Mm-hmm. You have 10, high yield, which I believe causes additional breaches. Yes. Okay, cool. <clears throat> does what, it... If this thing can even suffer breaches. <laughs> I was just going to say, <laughs> does, does an evil energy cloud suffer breaches? Um, We're about to find out. Find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a uh, spread of transphasic torpedoes, because you, the station hasn't fired them in their entire season, so why not? Or entire <laughs> game. Three seasons. Yeah. I, and it took also took three seasons to get me to talk with myself I for know. Uh, any length of time. So, I, as a GM, I'm calling this game a whole a win based on those two aspects alone. Okay. <laughs> uh, you fire a, a five golden orbs of twinkling devastation, launch out <laughs> of a special a specialized tube that has not been fired since the testing phases before the station became operational. It ah, it actually uh, shakes off some uh, some uh, dust as it does so. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Keevan keeps that lubed. 
Ah, <laughs> oh, always prepared. No. Phrasing, phrasing. Yeah. <laughs> It streak. Uh, it streaks into the. Uh, uh, it streaks into the void against the cloud, detonating just uh, as it impacts the physics field. The uh, you see the um, structure doesn't seem like the best word. Uh, you see you see the shape uh, twist and contort amongst itself, and it sort of curls in on itself like a snake with a tummy ache. Mm. Um, and it, it, you do see that it uh, ejects a significant amount of electric electricity into the air, or into the void of space, causing uh, ripples as physics f- literally fights with itself to contain and or contain and control it. But eventually, it uh, and it does seem to slow it down significantly, but not completely. And Crawford looks over... Is the Salak still, like, there? Oh, yes, it is watching with uh, extreme interest. Um, Virtue. Yes. Actually, oh, darn. Wrong person I wanted to talk to, but it's fine. I'll keep going with it. <laughs> um, how much more time has that given us? Is it about the 20 minutes that you predicted approximately yes it but look will... over at Keevan do we have any redundant power systems that we can give to this thing so we can figure out what to do faster well there is about two things we either start we take the systems and re- redirect everything to the replicators minus as much life support as we can, and two, I get down there to assist in any way possible to kind of keep the data stream going as efficiently as possible. I feel like the latter of those two options might be the safer one. Captain, I don't think both options are up. I think we have to use both of them. I think we need to use the ener- as much energy, and I need to be down there. Shut down all non-essential systems. Get everybody huddled up in... In... Uh, crap, what's the bar's name? The Eclipse. The Eclipse. The Eclipse. Well, into the centralized boulevard layers it, where they will be the most protected. Exactly. Get people to the boulevard, to the sick bay. sick bay, to the in anyone in the lower sections, to the um, manufacturing bays down in deck one ninety. Just to the safest, to the most central parts that we can funnel life support, and then send it all the rest of the energy up to replication. All right, make it so. Sir, may I also suggest we start general evacuations? Out of character question. Yes. Uh, did we find out if the cloud has a power source? Uh, you haven't. Uh, scanning inside the cloud itself it has proven to be quite um, useless, given the fact that inside is literally a different, lo- different um, physics, or different different laws of physics, which are not compatible with your sensor arrays. Okay. Yep. But we're able to see the outside and map the outside of its surface, right? Like, as length. As much as it can tall. be. It does seem to be yeah. shifting rather organically. Uh, fluidly might be the better term for it. Okay. Yep. Deckard's gonna pipe up. Uh, Captain? Yes? I have kind of have something illegal I want to try. Considering how dangerous this thing is, I'm more than willing to listen to a legal proceed. Now, it's a subspace weapon. With the computers dedicated to all of this, I can't get a proper trajectory. But if we detonate inside of it, whatever version of subspace it occupies or produces, it should get royally messed up. Okay. But we're going to need to sacrifice a ship. Or at least a warp core. Two. Three. 
or maybe nothing at all. If we detonate it inside of it, it will detonate their subspace, but not affect ours. Is it a subspace is a fickle thing. Isn't everything? <laughs> I do. Yeah, I assume. Huh. Are we essentially supposed to use the warp course to help create this? Technology is not necessarily my forte, Lieutenant, but essentially use the warp cords to create a shield of sorts? No, the warp cords are to be detonated inside the tear and hopefully closes. I see. If it doesn't, it's going to continue to expand and, well, consume. And I think I might out of character, I think I know precisely the ship we might have to sacrifice. <laughs> Apophis. Yeah. Although we could do it on a remote. Right. But when we have a remote control, we run the risk of I don't know, I feel like having a person there will make it easier. God damn it, Keevan. <laughs> Not wrong. Uh, Either way, he's... sir. Uh, don't roll a look to Crawford. I suggest that we start evacuating all non essential personnel in the shuttles. Get them out of the nebula. Get them out of harm's way. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Uh, start coordinating that. Aye, sir. Dolrum will go to his station and start coordinating general evacuation orders. All right. Um, at this point, Demos is in the uh, in, on a ship. The uh, Larg name escapes me. Apollo. Uh, when the call for general evacuation goes out. Demos to captain. This is the captain. Am I needed, or do I stay on the Apollo? Um, you can come back if you like, but we're just starting general evacuation procedures for all non-essential personnel and some civilians to at least get them out of the way, so if this thing hits the station, they aren't hurt. Understood. <clears throat> Demos to, uh, Eris. Eris here. Report to the Apollo, you're evacuating with decon. Understood. There's a confused tone in the, in her voice, but she will comply immediately. And I have her told me song. So, and I'll just put the Apollo on here, even though it's not launched, just so that I remember it's around. There we go. Ah. And one more call out. Mm-hmm. Deal with severity. Yes. You still need on the Arion? No, I'm about to return to the station. I want you on the Apollo. We're going to do evacuation. I can't leave my people. No, no, I'm not saying that, but if the station gets hit, I'd rather have you on a ship with its own life support. Understandable. I will try. I will beam over there shortly. See you soon. Yeah. yeah, I'll head back on to the... <laughs> Actually, I gotta find Decon. Decon, where are you? I am approaching the... Bu I'm approaching the boulevard as per g general... Uh, ah, as per evacuation orders. Nope, you're gonna be on the Apollo as well. Understood. Reporting to station. It's like size, but you're like, okay. I'm gonna go to the bridge. For okay. The operations. Okay, and this is going to be a. And if uh, uh, Kevin, are you heading to the dry dock area? Yes, I am. Okay, uh, Kevin, uh, you are fighting the crowds of people um, because you're senior staff. You have priority access to the turbo lifts, and you're able to make it to the dry dock area in a decent amount of time. And I did not bring it out, so we are just going to have to go theater of the mind. <clears throat> Uh, you are looking out over the station 
or over the dry dock station from one of the viewing platforms, and you're seeing a ship beginning to literally materialize. The amount of power that is going into the replicators that typically are used for, you know, bulkhead plates, industrial ca cabling, that sort of stuff, uh, whatever the SALAC has done to it has improved their capabilities significantly as you are beginning to see a starship replicate in front of you. It appears to be def uh, it appears to be that of a Sao Paulo class. Tuesday is just watching. That is an amazing thing. Let's need to just I'm <laughs> and I look at Tuesday I'm like oh, we might have to keep an eye on this after after the fact. But anyhow, we need to keep everything going as best as we can and keep this thing generating this ship as fast as possible. Tuesday will just chew on nothing and then slowly look to keep on. Yep. You watch the EPS conduits. I'll take care of any of the structural issues. But I'm the fabricator and the structural designer. Good point. He just puts both his hands on the station as if not wanting to move. <laughs> I I would like to point out that Keevan has your award for this exact thing. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> uh so we are going to okay let me see uh, spend it to put <sighs> I want to try to help the system fabricate this faster <laughs> as fast as possible okay now this is an this is where the either or uh, scenario comes in if you want to you know get a good targeting solution for the isolytic torpedo and the warp core after that power will need to be diverted to station weapons which will slow down this build. If you choose to speed up this build, the station cannot fire the... or the station will fire it, but it will not have as great an impact. I would feel that the isolytic weapon should be the very absolute last resort. I would say power to the replicators. Okay. Power to the replicators. Very well. With what feels like agonizing slowness, uh, you see the ship beginning to take effect. Your computer screens are spitting out information on what the ship is going to be. It appears to be using the template for a Sao Paulo class vessel. It appears to be a one that actually has been in service in Starfleet before, so they're not really breaking new ground. More like resurrecting something. Uh, it is called the USS Laden. Le L -A Laden. L A D O N. And just to get you all drooling, you should all now be able to see the, the character sheet. Yes. Yes. We have ourselves. Hello, yes. Anyways. Uh, Laden. Be <laughs> Uh, because you have chosen this, the uh, once the um, ship or once the shape reaches approximately uh, 2,000 meters, about uh, 2,000, 5,000 meters off the station, it begins to splinter and begins to sort of uh, long tendrils of energy with a gold or with a burning gold tip uh, begin to lance through the station's shields uh, it begins to puncture uh, deep within the station's structure and lieutenant demos you will begin receiving intruder alerts from decks uh, four all the way through decks uh, 100 uh, okay, 
I'm going to seal off bulkheads and immediately just vent Atmo as long as there's no people in there. Okay. Uh, but the, if there's intruders being detected, uh, then yeah, Atmo is being vented. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we are going to cut to Sulkin in sickbay. Uh, be- uh, let's see here. Sulkin in the infirmary. The, with, with the, the high pro spray. Yep. <laughs> uh, let's see. Nope. Uh, Patu is still there keeping an eye on his children. Um, after I just literally deleted his token because I am bad GM. Okay. Dr. Abbott, Dr. Sulkin, you are busy just keeping an eye on things. Uh, there is... I'm going to assign... Let's see. Pending, you know lockdown situations. Let's say that Dura is keeping an eye on sickbay. There is a significant amount of screaming coming from what was once an orderly evacuation. Dura sticks her head out and sees something absolutely disgusting. What she sees is a worm creature with uh, that's elo- that fully elongated would be approximately 15 feet long, three me- or three meters. Uh, for the most part, it is sort of slithering upright, uh, two thirds of it upright, and one third of it is slithering back. Uh, two long arms, a heavy amount of chitinous armor around it, um, but instead of a exposed underbelly uh, flaps of skin uh, fold away to real uh, uh, to reveal a massive maw of saw blade like teeth ending in a reddish uh, a ruddy reddish light that emanates from deep within um, you ha- uh, just due to the speed of its um, movement it has already grabbed two individuals uh, without a second thought, jammed them inside. Their screams become muffled and eventually fade into nothingness. Oh, God. <clears throat> uh, safe to say, um, Dura has a phaser rifle at this point. Oh, yes. Um, She is just opening fire on this thing. All right, roll me control security, please. Uh, with pleasure. <laughs> uh, I shall... How many momentum? Yeah, um, it's only difficulty two, right? Yes. Um... Could I say minor action to aim really quick? <laughs> yeah, I'll let you have that. Okay. Um, I'll just take one then, because I believe since phaser rifles have the accurate property, I can re-roll any number of them. I believe that's the case, yes. Okay. Okay, that's a hit. Uh, so that is through three successes, so you get one momentum. Uh, let's, let's re-roll that complication. Aw, really? Please. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, so that's another success, so that's four successes. Okay, so that's two more momentum for you. And right. what's, the, what's the base damage for phaser rifles? I think uh, it's four challenge four. dice. Yep. Four so plus that's your nine security. challenge dice because mm. I bumped her security up to five. So, pew! Uh, mm. Let's use a momentum to reroll those zeros. Okay. Do we know? One, uh, two, three, four, five zeros. Do we know if the creature has resistance? You do not yet. No, but in case, let's use one more momentum to shave off, too, just to see. Better safe than sorry. I feel like with an exoskeleton carapace. Okay, so that's six damage. Okay. Cool. Uh, Dura, you... uh, Your uh, your, uh, hours a day at the... uh, now, your hours per week training at the phaser range 
have literally drilled this into muscle memory almost as quick, almost as easily as walking or grabbing something uh, with your hand. Without thinking, you snap your rifle up, aim, blink twice just to focus, fire. And the beam of energy lances against the creature, and it sort of has a prismatic refraction effect as it as it comes across its physics degrading field. So only a little bit of damage actually got through. But uh, it be it turns, and we'll head over to where you are. Good, 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 good. But that is oddly enough not the most interesting thing currently going on. As we cut back to ops, I believe Demos is an operation. I, I will say I made a stop at one of the armory caches to pick up a rifle. I would be it would be remiss of you not to have done so. Uh, let's see, Lieutenant Commander Demos. For some reason, I don't have your token here. Okay. It's a compression rifle? Yes, it is. Which I think has more or less the same stats as a uh, phaser rifle. It just operates in damp, in weapon dampening environments. Uh, Lieutenant Xenocrates Demo, or sorry, Lieutenant Commander Xenocrates the Slayer Demos of Borg, and his little companion Midas who, for some reason, decides that now it is time to blare a welcoming fanfare as he struts on the bridge. Uh, and You're just, just upset that I said you can't record me anymore. <laughs> yes. That is accurate. I'm hoping that by making ostentatious remarks, other people will record you. Demos, welcome back to Ops. Mm. Uh, let's initiate Tartarus. Locking down ops. Activating Tartarus protocol. Locking down Operation Center. An ingenious program. This should assist. Oh, okay. You got different. Uh, he's not really going to focus on it for long, because he's going to turn around to uh, the... Well, how many doors are here? I'm seeing um, one here, so... here, and here. So this goes, t uh, uh, these two over here go to the top and bottom floor of the conference lounge, which is a one way in, one way out room. So okay. hypothetically secure. There's actually an, a second turbo lift entrance e on the other side that we've never used just due to how the set's laid out. And over here, I'm just go I'm just going to call that storage room three because no one has, it has never had any relevance in <laughs> this particular story. So I'm going to walk over to the turbo lift that we never use because I, I can't see it. Um, and I'm going to use something that I've only used once before. Uh, my shield spikes. Ah, okay. Uh, what? And I'll go. That materializes a force field in place, correct? Yeah, its own power source too. So if uh, power gets cut to the bridge or the operations, it's still powered. Okay. That's a good idea. You set that and spike. And a force field... How, what's the measure, what's the parameters of it? Uh, it fits into whatever doorway. Cool. So basically, I hit the center of the door, it expands out to fit the door frame. Okay. It bursts into a, you know, that static vroom of staticky blue light before it becomes completely invisible. The only thing that would ever indicate that it was there would be a small disc the size of a foot. And they go back to the other turbo lift that we always use, and I'm just watching it. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to wait long. You're already hearing a series of shrieks uh, coming or echoing up through the turbo lift shaft, and it's getting louder. We got incoming, Jensen. Crouch down near my cover. Uh, what? what? Okay. <laughs> um, here's a phaser. Go. <laughs> I I don't I don't I. Okay. <laughs> and Calvin Jensen has just enough time to come to his, uh, accept his new role as human sandbag. Uh, <laughs> as the turbo lift doors literally melt open. And out pops this thing. So I aim for its ugly mouth. 
Uh, which <laughs> oh, one? Oh, shit. Nope, nope, oh, nope. Oh, you know what? You, you know what? Hmm? Icebreaker. <laughs> which one's Icebreaker? Just the sniper rifle. <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, so, uh, three heads, all sort of melded into one structure. A uh, grand total of six eyes, three mouths, uh, t- one gargantuan neck, uh, four arms, all ending in scythe-like, in uh, acid-dripping scythes, a large distended green belly, all ties into a centipede sort of uh, lower back end with a green thorax that is literally melting the stay or literally dissolving the station as it touches it and it is propelled by four stubby legs that should not be causing it to move as fast as it is yeah i'm gonna shoot it that would be the appropriate response (laughs) or to kill it with fire one of the two things control security absolutely Rafati also is a security officer, so yep. he can also... Yep, someone should probably pick up Rafati, because this I have classified as the matriarch. So... One threat mm-hmm. for... Mm, how do I want to do this? <clears throat> uh, you know what? You know what? I'm just going to do... How much threat do you have, GM? I digits, believe... Single digits? I'm still in single, yes. Well, I want this thing dead, so I'm sorry, guys. For the beans, five dice. Okay. All threat. <laughs> Good. This Good. is how we die. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if it's any consolation, Dolrum is somewhere on the on ops. I'm oh, assuming yeah, over here. right. I apologize. I haven't made Dolrum vi- visible. There you are. But Dolrum has quick to action. Mm-hmm. So we have... Brown. Yeah, you do. Okay, let's see what Demos does first, and if there's anything left once uh, you scrape it off the walls, then... <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> okay, that's uh, seven... One, two, three... That's six successes. So um, we have... So we're capped on momentum. Capped on momentum floating. for the fourth time. <sighs> so, Icebreaker does have piercing one. Okay. Ooh. But I'm going to take one of the momentum just to do another re- uh, piercing. Okay. I mean, we have floating, Dolorum. Oh. Um, this is important. Um, is this energy or solid shot? Uh, it's kind of a mix. Okay. Okay. It's basically, uh, yeah, basically it's a bolt of, like, it, basically he's shooting a miniature sun. Ah, (laughs) okay. Cool. It's an energy bolt. Uh, yeah. Yes, okay. with melting. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> uh, so here's nine challenge dice. That's... I'm going to use another the, the other floating to re-roll those zeros. Mm-hmm. And something known as the Matriarch probably has resistance. That's... Nice. Oh. oh, God, that's uh, oh, ten successes. <laughs> With uh, a that, lot of shaving, with yeah. a lot of resistance. Shaved That's off. Uh, one, two, three, four, five resistance. So five effects. So that's piercing five. Cool. My thing is a total of seven resistance shaved off since he used one of the momentum yeah. four resistance. I think. Yeah. So the gun itself has a piercing one, and mm-hmm. then I used that other for the first right. floor momentum for another piercing. piercing. Cool. Uh, so it basically gets a chance to let out one of its terrifying screams. Uh, Demos says, shut up. And it the, it screams in pain as its distended body spurts out a green acidic ma- uh, physics-defying or physics-canceling goo that wherever it lands, it literally cancels that matter out. Uh basically slaying it literally. <laughs> I like to imagine instead of saying shut up, he just screams back at it like Brandon Fraser in The Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> After that image. situation, uh, Crawford will turn to Virtue and just like, we've given you more power, how much quicker can you do this? 
completion in five minutes. We'll require a will require antimatter and and warp plasma. Th those are the only materials that this station is incapable of creating. He kind of looks over to Demos because you know, Demos is chief of security, and those are important things to give to a random entity. <laughs> Take it from the shuttles. Well, the, no, we launched the shuttles. A general Turn evacuation. <laughs> Most, at I this, mean, at this we point, have a, the Apollo. <laughs> at this point, a significant number of shuttles and slipnears are fleeing the station and making their way to the Beta-3 catapult. We we have the Apollo. Well, but the Apollo Apollo also have several support ships. Carry. The Apollo is being used to carry civilians out of here. The only thing I can think of is we have two ships with multiple warp cores out there. The, the Roosevelt and was it the Apophis? Yep. Uh, have are um, basically Prometheus classes. They have multiple warp cores. Okay. Uh, how much material do you think you'll need of both, Virtue? Uh, he, as a GM, I have no idea what reasonable numbers are, but he spits out, uh, because it's a smaller ship, it doesn't need as much, or it only needs one scale 3 warp core and enough plasma for a scale 3 ship. Okay, so that would be... Like the gamma a... section of either of them. Yeah. yeah. Alright, uh, let's... Let's contact. Let's contact the Apophis. Okay. Uh, once again, that is Captain. Captain Vohol. I literally have every tab of my characters open, and I've been scrolling up and down, gathering them all. <laughs> it's like you're trying to get rid of them or something. I mean, you know, what's the point of having a support character to if you can't kill them? Anyways, um. So, uh, she's... Mm, sorry. Uh, Captain Valhall is still sitting at the con position. Her bridge is still empty. And she looks at you. So, Captain, hell of a plan you got going here on. Is being uh, penetrated multiple times part of your brilliant scheme? Phrasing. <laughs> We're working on it. Um, split into multi-vector assault mode. We need the warp core from the gamma section of the ship. She doesn't even bother to question why. She says, acknowledged. Engaging. Gamma section is away. All right, Virtue, you have what you need. All right. And at this point, can I ask you to spend two momentum to create the advantage? Yes. Yep. Okay. Activating. That is perfectly fair. Activating transporters. Plasma. Transported. USS or Starship classified USS Laden has been commissioned in Dry Dock 3. It is ready for launch. Oh, don't tell me we just got this new ship and now we have to blow it up. <laughs> Not necessarily. I mean, hey. that's almost what it seems like. Spooky Rami. Is that ship able to pilot by itself, or does it need a crew, or...? It requires up... It has been built to Federation standards, with minor modifications to weaponry. It will need a crew. And he looks expectantly at all of you. So... Don't pipe up. I'll take the crew. Minimal amount of people. I'll come along. I can pilot it. Okay. This. I'm going to try. I'm. Keevan's going to chime in. It's like. Keevan, Captain, the ship has been formulated. I'll meet you inside. This. Out of character, this feels like a suicide mission. <laughs> does it, though? How Maybe. Do you... it, it sort of does. Huh? Dorm just looks at Crawford. Your station. Keep her together. Yeah. And he heads down the turbo lift. Okay, so who else is going to join on the uh, USS Layton's 
maiden, maiden. journey. Why did it just feel like he did air quotes when he said maiden journey? <laughs> I mean, if you look, you know, if you had the time to look at the uh, ship's log, you'd realize that there, ha the USS Layden was part of the fe Starfleet out, but was destroyed approximately uh, five years ago. It's just been resurrected. See, Why he cut it for a brief second when he said maiden, so I thought he said maiden final voyage. <laughs> <laughs> I was tempted. I was tempted. Uh, let's see, where is Keevan? There's Keevan. Uh, who else is... Uh... Yeah. Hey, Demo, since you're, yep. since you're piloting it, you need somebody to be shooty-shooty, right? Shooty-shooty. Yeah. Is that yeah. the technical term you want to use for that, sir? Sure. Do you need somebody to be, be your pew-pew guy, you know? Okay. <laughs> Who's trying to be the pew-pewer? Pew the station, I'm kind of concerned. I mean... <laughs> We should probably have a pew pew person. Yeah. So who's the pew pewer going to be? I would say Dura, but she's kind of occupied right now. Okay. Uh, it'll be Mr. TM because he has tactical systems. There you go. Uh, feel free to activate him as necessary. Okay. And does he, okay, he has tactical two. systems? And because I, it would be remiss not to give Zach more screen time. Let's bring Zach on board. That way, I believe everyone has a character. Yep. Uh, Special Zach, you've been sort of twiddling your thumbs at the uh, Arion's communication panel going, well, now what? Oh no, sorry, you're... <laughs> and all of a sudden, uh, Dalrum just says, get on board the new ship, we need engineers. <laughs> get your okay. bloody ass over there! <laughs> <laughs> and... You guys are going to get on board a bridge that looks something similar to this. Oh, Ooh. Uh, the colors are slightly different um, than I had envisioned. There we go; it has loaded. Um, instead of being, you know, bright and cheerful colors such as the set piece inclines, uh, it, the floors are slate black with uh, neon blue lighting trim. Ooh, and one of these, and so you have all take. You have all taken your stations. And just to um, punctuate how soon, t how uh, much time is of the essence, the, sh the station vibrates with you inside of it. As the shape gets ever, ever closer. Pre system launch, gotta wait. Let's go. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Demos, uh, let's roll Daring plus Con. And the ship. Uh, can assist, please, with engines plus con. This is going to be a difficulty of two. Difficulty one, because I have precision maneuvering. Nice. Let's see, and you said engines con from mm -hmm. the good old laden? Laden right. class, yes. You guys thought Let's I'd see. forgotten about this ship, didn't you? Wondering what was going on with just the Arion. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Uh, so, uh, Lieutenant Commander... Yes. I'm just going to let you have two threat. Okay. I'll buy that threat. Cool. There is a slight hiccup as one of the docking clamps doesn't quite disengage entirely. Uh, you solve that by bringing it along with you. <laughs> uh, I do send a quick message to the Apollo for it to uh, get at least a bit of a distance away from the station. Uh, Decon acknowledges. Okay, you are here. Let us bring out the U.S. Uh, the ships, or the docking bay doors, open far too slowly for you to, a little slower than you'd like, but a quick, you know, uh, 90 degree t on the y-axis, and you are vertical. <clears throat> it's occurred to me that we don't actually see your nameplate. Or there we go. And you may, uh, those of you who have the character sheet open, may notice a slight change to the phaser cannons. Oh. Just a little bit, yeah. I need to look oh. at some changes to the phaser cannons. Oh. Give, me a, give me a hot minute. Oh, oh, nice. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it, has an, it has a security score of four, which means it can fire twice with no penalty increase. 
I believe that's the case, yes. <laughs> but it it can it can fire twice, but we still need two separate characters to fire, correct? Uh, yeah. TM. Yeah. Gomnus. Yeah, TM and TM and Demos. We're fine. Well, and Dolrum oh, can fire too. Yeah. yeah. And Dolrum has quick to action, and this <laughs> is the first round. Okay. Fire. Well, yeah. Okay, you guys. So begins the ship portion or ship to ship combat portion of well what could be the make or break portion of the finale uh, so dun, dun, dun. I'm just going to keep this on the bridge of the laden because this might be the only time we see the set piece and I <laughs> kind of want to show it off there we go sadly this wasn't a custom one this is one I found online I think it's style thanks to SI Calamity on DeviantArt so, if you're watching, if this ever finds its way to you, first of all, thanks. Second of all, I'm sorry. Third of all, <laughs> let's blow something up. Uh, so a question for everyone. Split screen this. Yes. Okay. Is it okay if Demos goes and fires first? Are we in close with it first? Actually, I should find out. Uh, He's right, attacking the station. Right now, uh, I would say that you're at medium range. Okay. But we would just have to use a minor action to get close, right? Correct. So yeah, we'll do that. Might actually get close. Okay. Um, well, hold on. I'm just thinking, what if we wanted to, t while we're already there, close enough to hit some of the tendrils to, you know, basically get it to recoil? But if we just outright kill the thing... Boy, never mind. I reset my, I reset my <laughs> idea. Okay. It's a good idea, but I have an evil one. <laughs> just... Just shoot center of mass like crazy and then uh, kill it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's just pause for a second. Shizno has said he has an evil idea. Shizno's mm -hmm. evil ideas are usually spectacular, usually evil, and usually throw me through a loop. So let's see what the let's see what Demos does here. So uh, control Demos secure. Just... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, well, first I'm gonna say Demos just reaches down uh, to just in this other control panel for the helm where the weapons buttons would be. Mm -hmm pulls it out, grabs a bunch of the optical wiring, and this is going to cost three momentum to do. Okay. And burn bright like a solar flare. The next attack is a vicious one. Oh, oh crap. crap. Okay, <laughs> this is going to be an interesting... Um... Hence me going, I got an evil idea. <laughs> As Demos literally goes Super Saiyan... Oh, no, the ship goes Super Saiyan. <laughs> <Heat. laughs> you just see this yellow aura start glowing around the laden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait, why does it have really long hair now? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this is also going to be fun for the engineer because it is uh, three times the energy cost. Yeah, so... so... <laughs> uh, uh, Keevan and Zach, you can figure out which one of you wants to be the power person. Um, but yeah, we got eleven power. Currently. You do. So this will be three and power. Control security. Control security. Difficulty of two. Uh, ship can assist with uh, weapon security. Hey guys. Yes. I'm gonna be evil again, but this time mm, against the players. Beans. Do you want the beans? Come on, the beans. But then he can kill us with more threat. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> but the beans allow us to nuke. But what and if you roll complications regardless. on those beans? It is a risk. I, I mean, you, you, have, you haven't used your determination yet, right? That is true. true. I haven't used nope, it. Nope, you haven't. <laughs> Neither has Dolorum, and he has two. But if I if I do the beans and I get a zero or a complication, I can just reroll them with my determination. That but he can. You could also just get successes and not have to worry about that. <laughs> okay, how about this? I will do one threat and then I'll use a two momentum to get four dice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I guess I'm more okay with that. <laughs> okay. And I have a focus. Uh, laden assessing, uh, assisting with weapon security. That's right. Well, oh, there's that complication. Determination. Okay. 
Actually, okay. no. I, uh, since I was here for last session, I have a milestone. Yes. So I'm just going to use that. Fair enough. Right, weapon security from the laden class. <clears throat> okay, so f we are looking at four successes so far, and that makes it five. So you guys get three and momentum. Two momentum? Uh... It should be three, I thought. It was a difficulty two roll. Sorry. Yep. Here we go. Ha, huh, for once, GM counted right. Yay! Anyways. <laughs> okay, Demos. Uh, roll however many we challenge dice. Nine. Yeah. The cannons also have versatile two. Yep. So. It, and it ignores resistance. Mm -hmm. Ignores resistance on the chaotic trait. Yeah. Versatile two gives us two... Ow. 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 Um, Ow. Both, Ow. Of the, both of those versatile are going to go into resistance. Uh, oh, wait, but it ignores no. resistance. I'm assuming this thing has the chaotic trait, so Indeed it's not it going to matter. Indeed it does. So, so what do we want to do with our for our two floating momentum? So you could... Do we just want to put it in straight damage? You could add challenge yeah. dice. You could re-roll... You could save to one to re-roll. You know, you have options. Well, I mean, I think the versatile two can only be used for, like, damage stuff. I think. Oh, yes, that's right. It cannot be used to re-roll. My apologies. Yeah, so do two we more... just want to do straight damage? Two more challenge die. Okay. I don't think it's challenge die. I think it's just straight it's two damage. More da yeah, two more straight yeah. damage. Okay. So, so we have 13 damage. Oh, okay. Plus vicious one. Oh, so, yeah. So that's 15. 15 points of damage to it. Okay. That is... Uh, so it's difficult to see from the ship itself, but anyone watching uh, will notice that the uh, phaser cannons from the Sao Paulo class are... That fires black balls of energy instead of the typical or yellow orange that is most commonly seen with uh, phaser cannons in Starfleet. Uh, but unlike typical phasers, these the this actually literally causes parts of the ship to dematerialize, disperse. Uh, it how or the uh, physics behind it, if uh, for Lakila's sake. Basically, it forces that part of the physics wall to break down and immediately f uh, forces the this universe's laws of physics to take over. In fact, overwriting parts of the creature. Ooh. Question from Elia. Yes? As the impacts are happening, can, are we able to get a better sensor read on the inside? I'm afraid not. It's... Okay. Um, to to uh, quote the um, who ah the author whose name I'm conveniently blanking on, it's turtles all the way down. <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah. So uh, that was the first round of combat. Quick oh, yeah, you have quick action. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, uh, do we want to have TM fire? I guess. Oh, first we gotta do energy reduction from the first attack. So how much energy was just spent? I believe that was th four. Three. Uh, three, oh. yes. Three, so we're at eight. Mm -hmm. All right. So I say team fire. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool, 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 cool. Let's see, control security. Control uh, security. Tactical systems is a focus. Absolutely. Um... I'll pop his determination for two auto successes with when I'm at tactical, nothing's impossible. Ha! <laughs> I enjoy that value. It's a good one. It's a good one. Um, do we want to do two momentum for a third die? Or why not? Mm -hmm. Alright. Control, security, 3d20. I have a focus. So that's five successes. Huzzah. So that's three momentum. Yep. So... This thing's just getting picked on now. Oh no, this was the whole... Uh, never mind, I will let you guys ride this out. Because, so we have yes. versatile 2. Uh, um, we don't die. need to worry about resistance. Oh boy. Well, that's only um, 4 uh, success. Only 4 damage. So Reroll the zeros with one of our momentum, not the versatile yep, so that's 2. Mm -hmm. 5. <clears throat> okay, that's that better. Much better. So that's 10. And... Um, what and then two more damage. Two yeah, so that'll be a total of... 12. 12 damage. Okay. 
Okay. Um, here's a here's a weird question I have. Mm -hmm. Um, do we want to use <laughs> do we want to use momentum on power drain just to see what happens? <laughs> uh, let's not have experiments. Let's just take the twelve damage. And <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it'd be interesting, but okay. Okay. It's a little vital to waste of momentum here, and then nothing happens. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um, combined, uh, Jer uh, TM's uh, fantastic uh, use of the fire button, with combined with Demos's expert tease of the uh, helm, which you know this ship is almost as responsive as the Apollo, just not. It just doesn't have the same punch to it. At least from an engine point of view. Weapons, yeah, yeah. hell yeah. But engines, nah. Uh, Midas believes that now is a good time to play another theme song. As trumpets begin to fill the uh, air of the um, Is, of the it, is it the March of the Valkyrie? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes! <laughs> Just because it's a good song. As, ah, where'd my mouse go? There's my mouse. We cut to the outside of the bridge. Uh, the outside, where we see the uh, laden dipping and ducking around the exterior of the creature, or whatever it is. Uh, the first few blasts are uh, along the uh, split tendril areas, and once those are severed, um, Dura, uh, J Dura in sick bay is basically at this point using the phaser rifle as a club to fend the thing off. Uh, it goes to strike Dura's and try to. It tries to grab Dura and, oh god, eat her. But just as its long tendrils wrap around her, it lets out a scream of pain and vanishes. Uh, similar, <laughs> uh, Captain, you are receiving similar reports around the, along the sta uh, around the station. Crawford to the laden. This is the laden. Whatever the hell it is you're doing, keep doing it. As you wish. Uh, sadly, it is now my turn. As the sh shape ship decides to strike back at the laden. And because you guys have given me a bit of threat, I will add a third die to the attack roll. And that is two critical successes. Oh, no, sorry, one critical success and the other ones are fine. So that is enough to hit you. <clears throat> and I get to roll me some damage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not as much as I was hoping it was going to be, but I will spend one more threat to re-roll those zeros. Uh, only eight. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we have a yes. blade. Of, we have a blade of and rugged, I believe. So that's actually six resistance. Uh, so rugged just means how easy it is oh, to yeah. repair the ship. Um, five. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's five resistance. So that is. You only take three off our shields. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm, yeah. I'm going to spend two. Th I'm going to spend one more threat to reduce your resistance by two. So at least that will deal you five points of damage, which is enough to cause a breach, I believe. I'll roll system hit, because why not? Yeah, sure. Go for it, man. Oh, boy. Everyone's favorite. Structure. Structure. Oh, goody. Yay, who uh, gets can, hurt? can you roll me a challenge dice, please, Crawford? Oh, I absolutely will. Someone's injured. Yay. Someone's injured. <laughs> you don't have a doctor on board. This will no, be fun. No, we don't. Okay, so let's go back to the bridge here, just so that we can watch this play out in real time. Um, be, do you want me to go further and roll the die to see who gets critically injured? No, this will be my pleasure. So uh, let's <laughs> let's do this counterclockwise, where uh, TM is 1, Dalrum 2, Keevan 3, Zach 4, Demos 5. I believe that's actually clockwise. <laughs> uh, I'm Yeah, sorry, clockwise. He's Canadian. Three. Oh, so, no! Uh, so, Keevan. Commander, uh, Commander Keevan, a purple surge of energy 
breaches the uh, shields of the uh, Laden, and it arcs through the bridge, and your screen literally explodes, causing you to fly backwards. Uh, so you are now you now suffer an injury, and uh, you can spend your determination to you know avoid it and carry on, or you can be taken out. But either way, you will need to be stabilized. Or TM Before has emergency the end medicine. Of the scene. <laughs> oh, TM does have emergency medicine, eh? Cool. Uh, yeah. We will pop that determination to keep me afloat. Okay. The only thing is, what is it? With the determination, if you pop it, if you get di- injured again, you are dead. Yeah, dead. you're dead. Yes. He also rolled to avoid injury, right? I believe... Oh. I look this up almost every think... other session, and I always forget the rules. I feel like that would only be for like a non-lethal injury. I don't know. Uh, tell you what, uh, it's done its action, so you guys figure out how you're going to hurt it next, and I will look up the rules for injuries. <laughs> so, uh, let's see, so we can't really fire again. Well, you could. It would just be an increased difficulty. This is true. Zach's going to get our power restored. Gonna... That's what I was going to say. I will get... I will take the uh, control panel. I have emergency repairs. Okay. So. Uh, page 176. 176. Thank you. Let's see. Fighting injury. Uh, let's see. May not sit down by suffer injuries. Da, 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 da. <clears throat> Okay, so... Ah, okay, so it looks like you can spend your determination to avoid it, so you're completely normal. But if you do it again, you're done. Uh, let's see. Oh, you may choose to avoid an injury. It costs two momentum immediate to do so. Remember, an immediate momentum spend can be paid by adding to threat instead. Characters may alternatively avoid an injury by suffering a complication. Okay. Uh, so, how do you wish to avoid it? You could spend your determination, you could spend two momentum, or or threat, because I like threat. Or you could oh, take the mom- injury and suffer a you- complication. <laughs> if you take the complication, or if you do the momentum, that's repeatable to avoid the injury, whereas the determination, if you pop that, if you get injured again, you're done. Uh, afraid not. You may only... Uh, it is. It's not a repeatable action. You may only avoid an injury once per scene. I thought that was misremembering. That, that could be from a different GM. I'm, I, I've had to relearn a few rules too, because you know I learned under other GMs. I'm just There's go- the following paragraph that says characters may obtain the ability to avoid injuries additional times during a scene by yeah. succeeding a recovery, recovery task. task. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Le- let's use. Let's use the determination. Okay. Balls it. Okay. Uh, you see the black lightning coming a microsecond before it zaps out. It arcs along your control panel, shorting out the system, or shorting out this particular panel, but uh, you are uh, you are perfectly fine. You're going to have to take... an. Uh, special Zach, I'm going to spend one. Th- I'm going to spend two threat for complication. It arcs onto your beard. Your beard catches fire. Deal with it. Because <laughs> I was going to take my action to get to the control panel to like work on emergency repairs to get it working again. Mm-hmm. And yes, as I run over to the council, I'll catch on fire. <laughs> oh, bloody hell! And the fire and the fire suppression system just. Yeah, uh, you're covered. I got with... a big fuzzy beard. <laughs> yep. Uh, anyways, for you, GM. Yes. If Dolorm orders TM or me to fire again, can we fire again? It would just be an increase in difficulty, right? That would be uh, yes. That would just be an increase in difficulty. And I'm... before I immediately move, um, I use my determination. So we're going to try Veterans Challenge die to see ah, if I regain. Yes. Here we go. Uh, yes. No. Uh, afraid not, man. 
That's that's all right. At least you're alive. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Zach, what's that roll for? Um, is that power restoration? Yeah, I was using a momentum, and I'm trying to get the uh, emergency repairs to get the uh, engineering council back on. Ah, yes. Oh, right, because the, the ship did, stru- did suffer a breach to structure. Yes. Okay. So. I think the getting the council back up is just a minor. Yeah, it is, yes. So that's the minor action for this round. But power restoration can work. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yep, okay. Which is what, a difficulty two, and then you gain one power for each addition, no momentum you spend? I believe that mm-hmm. to be the case, yes. Let's see, structure damage. Now, is quick to action or, or the momentum buy to maintain initiative? Is that only once per round? I believe that is only once per round, yes. Uh, but I think quick to action allows that action without the momentum cost. So it is yeah. technically the same action, just you get it for free once. Yeah, I was wondering if like, we did quick action first, and then if we could do by the initiative with two. Uh, no, afraid not. Right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so roll me challenge dice to restore power, I believe. That's how that works. Well, it's a uh, test. Oh, it is the test. Okay. So, so control we engineer. get one for. Oh, I thought it was. My... Sorry, I'm I'm trying I'm reading two th- I'm reading one thing and trying to listen to another. I'm sorry. It's daring or control and engineering mm-hmm. with difficulty two. Okay, uh, Tobias, I'm going to call Zach's roll for that. So he passed with one momentum or one extra success. So I added that to momentum. We get one power gain for succeeding the task, and then it's additional power for each momentum spent. Okay, and how many spend? How many spends are you going to do? Do we just want to do the one that we one that we just yeah. got? Yeah, I was going to say then we'll be at nine power. Okay. Well, here would be the thing: would I be able to assist Zach? Um, I'm going to say no, just because you um, spent spent your determination to avoid the injury, just for Good thematic point. effect. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Question. Yes. Can I assist as advisor because I told Zach to get the power back on? Oh, ah, uh, yes. You can certainly do that. Dang, nice. Nice. I have advisor. Okay. Nice, nice yeah. catch there. Presence command. Presence command. Yep. Uh, combat training. <laughs> sure. Uh, it's a bit of a stretch, but. I'll let it I have happen. Sort of, I have protocol, diplomacy, yeah. tactical systems, survival. Yeah, I'll let it. I'll let it go. Survival. Mm-hmm. You survive. No yeah. success, I'm afraid, but that's all right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I believe that uh, repair. I believe was a minor action. Uh, so someone still has their regular action. Well, the doing the restore power task was the action. Ah, yeah. it was. Okay, so my turn again. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens this time. Um, just due to its nature, it's certain things such... It doesn't get a lot of cool abilities, but it does hit hard. So let's see how it does for attacking. I will spend another threat for a third dice. 3d20. That is a grand total of three successes. <clears throat> so it so does it's hit. It's going to be an increased difficulty to yep. fire again for you, but yep. it doesn't matter. It, no, I took that into account. That's why I bought the third dice, thankfully. And let's roll some dice. That's Ooh. eight with a... Let's see. I am going to spend two threat, tap its cha- um, tap its chaotic, or use the create advantage uh, to tap its chaotic trait, and I'm going to give that piercing or I'm going to give that vicious one, mm-hmm. which means that that is a grand total of twelve damage, uh, negated by five, uh, thanks to your resistance. So we take seven. You take seven. seven which I believe might be enough to drop your shields entirely. Yes. 
which means you're going to suffer two oh, no. punches. Nope. We have eight, we have nine shield. Oh, well, poop. Okay. Uh, so your sh your shields are there, but you still suffer one breach. Um, I'm going to roll the system hit table. Oh no, okay. Crawford already did. That I mean, be... you can if you want to. <laughs> nah, that's weapons, and I actually have that up somewhere nearby. Where's the weapons? W. Weapons damage impact uh, suffers one or more breaches. It just disrupts. So until the tactical officer performs the restore minor act. Restore minor action. The ship cannot make any attacks. Oh, Alrighty. We can't attack anymore this turn. Anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I... Immediately, <sighs> Dolrum will look at Keevan. Can we get shields back? I believe, uh, can. I believe that's a thing you can do. Yep, looks like control engineering, difficulty one, assisted by structure engineering of the ship. Cool. I uh, have the ship up. It's shield, so that's two. that's deflector technology for a focus. Yes, it is. That would be a good one. We suffered two breaches. That's correct. Uh, no, you suffered, you suffered one breach. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh, oh that's uh, zero uh, successes. Oh, no, I mean total for breaches. Oh, yes, you have only suffered two breaches. <laughs> can Dorum give his determination to Keevan? Um, Dorum can do something with his determination, but it that's the captain's... I mean, I guess right now you are filling the commanding officer role, so I'll let it fly. Since I have an extra determination anyway. Do. Here you go, Keevan. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll use it to re-roll my re-roll. <laughs> okay. I have a freaking 16 and I zeroed out on both of them. Come on. Man, if that would have been a good time for me to increase threat range. Oh well. I don't have much left anymore. Good. Uh... Okay, we'll take the one. Okay, that's at least enough for success. So... Which gives us um, repo two plus two for every momentum spent. So how many momentums do you want to spend? So do we gain any just for succeeding the task? I will say that you regain... Just because it seems silly not to be able to regain anything, uh, I will say that you regain two. So it would make sense to regain two and then we get two for each additional... Right, That's yeah, that's what yeah. it said. Okay, Okay. good. Um, use one more restore restore four total. Keep in mind you can always give me threat. <laughs> um, Demos is also taking three stress per breach. Oh, right, because your neural interface. Yeah. <clears throat> is it three stress or three challenge dice of stress? It just has three badge of stress. Okay, so that's three so challenge dice. I think it dice. means three challenge dice. Yeah. Challenge dice. Thank you for. for... Yeah. Yeah, he's tied into the system, so. Okay. Okay, so that's three, Four. from the first breach, and another three <laughs> from the second. So since it wasn't over five, because nope. they're two separate yep. instances. You just I'm, take I'm the sure. stress damage and no injuries. All right, cool. Yep. Until you run out of stress. Okay. <clears throat> then the Omega particle bomb goes off in my chest. <laughs> yeah, let's... If that's the case, we're going to eject you. That only works if you say your um, favorite word. Inject him into the cloud. Thunder Cougar <laughs> Falcon Bird? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's focus, folks. Um, so... Uh, so, uh, whose turn? Right, your guys' turn. I believe that this is your last action before you have no turns left. Huzzah. I think uh, before, just... before, or before I think we... this is the... This, uh, this will everyone add an action. Has no, everyone... I have not done my command action. Yep. I did it. I assisted as an advisor, but yep. I have not done the command action. Yep, okay. Dolrum hasn't done you... anything. Uh, my you, could, you, could do, you could do the rally action, get us some momentum. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Uh, that does require a speech, though, Dalrum. So give us a, you know, a hearty speech, and then roll your dice. Just a, 
We hit him once, we can hit him again, we have people to save. <laughs> that works. Uh, roll. Simple, but yeah. effective. <laughs> what, is it, what, it's a uh, presence or... command difficulty zero. I'm going to spend that momentum on the third die. Okay. To get momentum. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. um, composure. Yeah. The whole ship is literally shaking across you. And yeah. We yeah. Have four momentum in total now. Cool. Nice. Nice spend. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, now, there is a minor action left, which I would strongly recommend that TM do something about that. Yeah. Uh, let's. Have we gotten Tactical back online yet? You have not. No, no you haven't. No. So, Tactical officer. Then I moves. shall put Tactical back online. <laughs> okay, I believe that is a control security test. No, uh, you nope. just it's just a minor action. You just restore it. Oh, okay then. You have yeah. tappity tappity and your null phaser cannons are back online. I think it's more of a zit zit. Well, <laughs> that too. Okay, so. So a zit zit so we can pew pew? Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> um, because I think it's it is uh, thematically appropriate. Um, you guys have taken several shocks, uh, both uh, Demos and TM's proximity sensors uh, show a show that not as you fly forward, uh, the Armhurst, the Roosevelt, and the uh, let's see, those were damaged, and the uh, and so is the Apophis and the Arion have all formed a delta formation around you, um, protecting you from further attacks. Let's see what happens here. Well, that's a complication. Okay. GM complication. That should give us momentum. Uh, GM complication. Right. So, you know, I've done, you know, I've told you how your complications turn out. How should this complication turn out? For, for, for the, is this for the giant cloud thing? Yes, for the shape ship. Yep. Um, Can we say that the... I'd uh, almost like to say it damages itself in some way, but I'm not sure how. Stop well, hitting I, yourself. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the idea of maybe our null cannons um, have, like, an adverse effect that it's kind of starting a chain reaction as it's um, as we hit it. Okay. So it has, like, an, a lasting damage on the inside since the physics work differently inside of it. Okay. I like this idea. So how I'm going to do this is I'm now going to treat it as if it were two as if it were one scale smaller. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And that is how it is going to be. Because that is literally how it is beginning to react as your energy, your null phaser cannons begin to impact upon its surface. It begins to instinctively recoil away from you. So got a quick question. Mm hmm. What's the status of the, uh, uh, it was like 20 some minutes or something like that until the statues or was it two hours? Uh, I can't remember. The statue pieces were coming. Oh, oh, that's pylons. That's weeks. Oh, okay. I apologize. That's okay. Yeah, the, I believe the other time needed was them, him making the laden. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's why I got confused. Okay. That's okay. all good. That's alright, it's getting late, and you guys are doing awesome. Yes, yes you are, absolutely. So, um, this is going to be a new round, so reset everything to default, and what do you wish to do now? I mean, we get to do you want to shoot stuff now, Dolrum? <laughs> I do kind of want to shoot the pew-pews as the, as the commanding officer. Okay. <laughs> shoot the pew-pews as the commanding officer, then. <laughs> it is his prerogative. Okay, okay, Mr. Dolrum, do the pew pew. It's his and you, have, and you have one more determination, don't you? Or I do. I'm not like we need it. it. Uh, it's always fun, though. It I am going to give you a threat for a third die. Ooh, okay. Since I have bold. Ah, yes. And tactical systems focus. Yes, indeed. Oh, wow. God. We're going to Good thing you can reroll that, that complication. complication. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who's got the ship? Uh, I'll grab the ship. That's oh, a good, baby. That's a, good, that's nice. a nice reroll. That's a nice reroll. That's three successes already. So we get one momentum. Yep. And that's a that's a fourth momentum. We capped on momentum. You're capped again. 
So what do we want to use the versatile two for? Additional damage. All right. Yes. Okay. So eleven challenge dice. Eleven. Yeah. Well, nine oh, challenge yeah, dice plus sorry. two. That's right. Okay. So, so that's the ten. Eight. Do we want to reroll those zeros just for fun? Yes. I kind of do. Yes. All right. Okay. Oh, Ooh, let's go. That's <laughs> so 14 damage. 14 points of damage against this thing. Okay. Uh, do you have a cool one-liner, Dalrum? <laughs> I just like the take that mother... F- okay. <laughs> okay. Get these motherfucking so, snakes off so of our... So that sounds just like... What is it? I think it was that line was Rihanna in the movie Battleship. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah uh, um, no, that was Mahalo. Yeah. Return to Sender. That one's uh, really good. Yeah, Return to Sender is a good one. Yippee ki yay, Melon Farmer. Ah. <laughs> okay. So all th- all four ships do a, or all four Starfleet ships do a precision maneuver. Uh, swinging around, the, the USS Arion breaks off. Perf, uh, breaks off just in time to give the USS Laden a full-on blast or full-on volley of null phaser energy uh, that rip down these whatever this thing has as a cent- as a as a spine. Uh, it tears open the physics shield, exposing the chaotic interior where you swear that you can see literal faces in color before they vanish Uh, trailing behind uh, the USS Layden as physics rushes in to uh, restore itself is a series of sort of antimatter fireworks is the best way to uh, explain it that that cause this ship shape thing to to a uh, swell in s- swell in spots before exploding into uh, dark uh, dark specks of light. Um, by the time that the USS Laden comes around for a second volley, uh, the shape ship has split into two, then four, then seventeen, oh. then nothing. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> as oh. physics exploits various uh, loopholes in which it says our turn bitch and <laughs> and re- res- and the whatever this was is now no more do the poor uh do the gates on the hub turn back to green or are they, they still do. red uh the uh the ports or the gates on the pub have reverted to green. Uh, for the first time, or sorry, in sick bay, Doctor Salkin, uh, the screaming has stopped. It is peaceful in your mind once more. A quick glance out to Janus Three has revealed that its mouth has closed, and it has once again resumed its watching position. On the bridge of your station, Captain Crawford, aside from uh, reports of damage control teams and security officers, uh, you know, performing a thorough sweep of the station, it's quiet. Ooh, quiet. <laughs> That's what I was saying off mic. Ha. Uh, Virtue, the SALAC AI construct, simply says, it is done. And vanishes. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think of who the. Let's see, the highest ranking officer, Dr. Crawford, would be what? Probably Sulkin? Uh, In terms yeah. of currently on the station, at least. Uh, Sulkin, yeah, or possibly, uh, I believe his name was Soten, one of the, the Beta Shift commander. Yeah, but he's oh. a Vulcan. Sar- yeah. A Sarat. Oh, yeah, Sarat's a Vulcan. And I don't believe he has the colon R thing, so yeah, he would have been affected. Yep. Uh, he'll just put out, like, a station-wide communication to personnel. Okay. And what will damage this Damage report. Say? Damage report, people. How many casualties do we have? Uh, 
it takes a few minutes for uh, casualty numbers to come in uh, of, thing. Yeah, of the approximate so of the general evacuation all civilians were uh, were six uh, all civilians were successfully um, evacuated Starfleet personnel <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Starfleet personnel, of course, had just stayed behind and done things. Let's see. Wow. Uh, apparently, of uh, the potential worst-case scenario, uh, the station did well. Only ten people uh, have been reported as <laughs> dead. That's on two D one hundred. That's a two. I rolled. Wow. So for the audio listeners, I rolled two D one hundred to see how many people died. I rolled a two and an eight. So, Captain Crawford, congratulations now, to you and the Cerberus crew in general. You see, he most does have to Kirk train security personnel. He does indeed. <laughs> he does indeed. You see, you see Crawford looking at the casualty list, just sort of breathes a sigh of relief and is sort of slumped down in front of the console here. Now, we did lose the Polar Stern and all hands on that ship. Yes, you did. Yes, we did. But all things considered, it could have been much, much worse. Oh, well, well, yes. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And Crawford will immediately um, go to his office and... Uh, He's he's gonna start writing letters for the uh, crew of the Polar Star okay. for families. Okay, so you're going to leave all the you know the happy, you know post war or post victory celebrations to Commander Dalrum. Uh pretty much, yeah. Okay. All right, so that is the end of everything I have planned. So, question is to players: What do you guys want to do? Demos is checking in on his daughter and Verity and Decon. Okay. Uh, Decon reports that they have all um, that they have all escaped, and we're about to make their way to the. Uh, uh, we're about to enter Quantum Slipstream. Okay. And Iris is okay. Absolutely. Uh, she's kind of sad that she wasn't able to, you know, stay and fight, but this is her new role: is apparently to be coddled. Well, she is an ambassador after all. Yes, Guess yes, she is. The ambassador safe. <laughs> he was just like, uh, Iris, Verdi, Verdi, Iris. Um, as when when you see them the next time, they both look at each other, share a knowing glance, knowing glance, and giggle over some form of inside joke that they refuse to share with you. Amen. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will find out the secret. <laughs> Tune in next time. Demos' secret. Anyways, <laughs> uh, let's. Dolorum um, would. Yeah. I was gonna say Dolorum would immediately be heading down to sick bay to check on the kids. Sure. Yeah. Let's... On the same note, Sulkin is uh, reawakening all of the people that we knocked out and mm -hmm. are trying to like you know make sure everyone is all right and you know yeah. now that the voices are gone and. Okay. Stuff like that. So, uh, so Dalrum, you make your way into sick bay, where you are immediately assaulted, as both Apatu and Zyler give you great big hugs. I'm fine. I'm fine. How are the twins? Uh, they. No, well, I'll let Doctor Sulkin give that update. as they're both recovering. They're slowly waking up. Hello, Dr. Salkin. Hello? Hello. Hello. Uh, okay. he's a, Sorry. Yeah. Commander's asking you about his kids, damn it. Answer. Yes. <laughs> I, everyone, I actually had a speech going there until I realized I was muted. <laughs> uh, 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 care, to, care to redo that so that everyone yeah. can hear you? Sure. Uh... Everyone has wakened successfully. The voices have stopped. Uh, rest and some uh, relaxation will be needed, but your children are fine. 
Thank you, Doctor. Uh, I Lute appreciate it. Lieutenant Ashias groggily stands up, instinctively reaches for her medical tricorder, and begins scanning Lieutenant Darval, who, f for the first time, seems to be snoring and sleeping quite peacefully. Mm. Well, just ifs. Mm. Lieutenant Jargovim is also standing up. He is pale and visibly shaken by the whole experience. Uh, he'll walk right up to Commander Dalrum and weakly say, Sir, I respectfully request a transfer. Somewhere quieter, I think. Going back to Beta Z. <laughs> no. We'll work out those no. details. Too noisy. Maybe Ferenginar. They're... I can't read Ferengi. And I'm sure they have some interesting spatial anomalies nearby that I can study in peace and quiet. The Klingon Empire is also not a bad spot. Yeah. He shudders a bit. Possibly. Possibly, Captain. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant... Or sorry, full Commander Keevan. Uh, what do you wish to do? I would be just taking a, you know, look over the USS Layden, the new ship, and, you know, besides fixing that up and maybe checking in um, on my friend. Ah, yes. Well, funny you should say that, because she finds you. Uh, you're, of course she does. Uh, you're, you're in a, let's say, a slightly compromising position inside a Jeffrey's tube as you feel two hands clasping around your feet and literally pulling you out. Uh, you see her smiling as she gives you a big hug. I'm fine, I'm fine. It's It was a little stressful, but we're okay. She places a hand affectionately upon your cheek and just nods in full of, just in um, full understanding of everything. I think we'll have a lot to talk about after all of this is over. Yes. For for starters, you're taking me back to those pylons. There's so much I can learn there. Holy cow! Like, we've had a literal artificial intelligence taking over this station, and it won't let me talk to it. It says all the information I, ha I need are on board the pylons. <sighs> we'll get you out there. I, that's a promise I'll make sure that I can keep. <laughs> all right. And you have never seen her smile so wide and bright before. <laughs> you do uh, kind of have a ship, Kivan. Yeah, you have your own ship. <laughs> uh, uh, Salkin, anything else you're doing? Nope, Salkin's good. Cool. But out of nowhere and storming out of the new ship, you hear, I'm going to be in the sonic shower for a week getting this foam out of my nether regions. <laughs> 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 <sighs> Uh, mm -hmm. Lieutenant Commander Demos, anything else for you? Uh, just time spending time with uh, Verity and Iris. All right. And also including Deacon into some events as well. Uh, Deacon is more than happy to assist. Uh, to the uh, casual outside observer, this would be the weirdest, uh, or this would be a odd family, but it's still a family, and it's your family. It's Star Trek. There's weirder. Yep, it is indeed. <laughs> uh, finally, um, Captain Crawford, is there yeah. anything left? Uh, I will give you the last scene if there's anything you want to say or do or expound upon. Um, I think at some point during the aftermath of all this, uh, he would probably call Dolrum up to his office. Okay. Let's bring Dolrum up to the captain's office. As soon as I get the captain's office loaded here. Captain, uh, you guys aren't Let's here. See, Verifier Crick isn't there anymore. Nope, no, he's not. <laughs> he's long gone. Uh, Commander Dolrum enters without even bothering to ring the bell. He's. It's just been that kind of day. <laughs> I walk up to the uh, replicator. Two whiskey. You, you look and you see that Crawford already has like a glass of whiskey sitting at the desk. <laughs> it's like, change that. A whiskey and a bottle of whiskey. 
<laughs> Acknowledged. Oh god. <laughs> apparently the replicator is now Klingon. <laughs> no, I think it's apparently the Salak now, but it's, it's the Salak. Mm. He comes over, sits down, and puts the bottle on your desk. Well, sir, it's been an interesting day. Interesting is probably the weakest word you could use to describe today. Death defying, crazy, insane, physics bending, under attack, Thursday. Yeah, he sort of like pinches the bridge of his nose, just like. I mean, all things considered, it went well, but. And he sort of slides a data pad over, but essentially all the casualties, including the entire crew of the Polar Stern, this still feels like too many. To be honest, sir, I think one always feels like too many, but it's also the risk we take being out here. It is, but part of me still feels like it could have done something different something better I don't think we could have done anything differently we did what we could with the information we had reacted with what we had we tried different or different approaches we did what we could at the end of the day we tried and that's all we can ever say we we tried our best in the end we got it but there's always hiccups along the way it's true and he'll sort of like just slug down what's rest of eh, of the glass of whiskey he's currently drinking and refills it uh, as you uh, raise the glass again, you notice a familiar feminine form materializing and sitting in the chair. Hello, Rami. Captain, I am pleased to inform you that the intelligence has removed itself completely from the systems. I am once again in full operation of this station. I thought you would be the first to know, sir. That's good to hear, Rami. How was it being somebody different? I have no recollection of what has transpired during the time that this station was possessed. It was like I was shunted into a dark box. I could see and hear, in a sense, but it was nothing. It is an experience I do not wish to have again. I do not blame you one bit. She uh, once again looks up to C Captain Crawford. I yes. would like to request autonomy. Or at least an, auto an autonomous presence within the station. Perhaps. Would you like to keep the form that you have now or is there a different one you'd like to take? I see nothing wrong with my current physical appearance. I have perhaps they have left perhaps this intelligence has left me a little bit of initiative. I have already taken the liberty of downloading the Maddox type Android with its holotronic matrix specifications. Once station operations have returned to normal, I would like to request that some priority be made over constructing a body for me. Or at least a copy. Be a very interesting seeing you around, walking around here in physical form. It's certainly something that I can start looking at, Rami. That is all I can ask for, sir. And she dematerializes. Dolrum just takes a swig of, of his whiskey. So, sir? 
What's next? And I think on those lines, that's a good place to end the story. <laughs> so, I, uh, so as I have mentioned, this was the series finale of Star Trek Cerberus. I would very, uh, I believe that for the most part, this has been a very good, se- a very good game. But mm-hmm. I, as a GM, believe that it's time to try different stories set around the same area of space, just with a different crew. So, it's, the station's not going anywhere, it's just going to be pushed to the background a bit, as hopefully the, the same players will join me on my next series of stories, which should start up sometime in the fall. Um, of course. As a... I am humble enough to acknowledge that I would be nothing without my players. Uh, so I would like to take this time to thank Spencer for Captain Crawford, Scotty for Dolrum, Shizno for... Uh, Lieutenant Commander Demos and his... Ah, I'm forgetting the name already. Da. Galen. Galen, thank you. For Demos and Galen. Uh, and Gloria CAS for Lieutenant Commander Keevan and our late arrival gate jumper for Dr. Sulkin. I'd also like to um, acknowledge and pass thanks to those players who could not stay with us and had to leave due to other things coming up. It is the sad nature of role-playing but I'm glad that we had a players to stick around. So, and of course, I'd like to thank the audience with whom I have never streamed games before, and I figured that this would be a good thing to try. I'd like to think that I've caused a positive, or had positive uh, reactions to those of you who choose to listen to me. Hopefully, I, we will continue to listen to whatever games I GM in the future. So, on behalf of myself and my players, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye! Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>